Hello. That's okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just getting set up here. It's the first time I've used my PC for something like this. Um, my name is Spaces. Welcome to my Let's Play of Tell Me Why. Uh, Tell Me Why was developed with guidance from cultural, mental health, and transgender advocates. The game portrays intense situations related to family violence and emotional trauma. To learn more, visit that website. It saves automatically. When you see that icon, do not turn off the saves. All right. Let's get right into this. Oops, I minimi minimized it by accident. Alright. Let's start a new game. Tell me why is a game that takes your choices into account to shape your relationship with other characters. Choose wisely. Xbox Studios. Don't nod health. Entertainment. I don't know where I read the word health. Delos Crossing, Alaska, March 1st, 2005. Yes, out. Hello. Hey, kiddo. Hey, Eddie. I need to ask you a few questions, okay? Fine. Can you tell me what happened tonight? I'm not quite sure. I want to play this I, game, but it was only for Xbox. I went to show her my haircut. She had a gun. Oh, Jesus. She... Take your time. You interrupted. She freaked out. I... I... It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. My mom tried to kill me, so... So I stabbed her. Wow. I killed my mother. Oh my god. Tell me why. Chapter 1, Homecoming. I'm so excited to play this game. Like, the second it came out, like, before it even came out, I wanted to play it. And then it was only for Xbox. I don't have an Xbox, so I can do anything about it. Which sucked. But, we're moving on. Because now I get to play it because I bought it on Steam. But now there's upbeat music playing. Firewood Residential Center, November 2nd, 2015.
Alright, Okay, first, Alice. I'm gonna find the keys to the old house. Then, I'm gonna drive to Fireweed and I'm not going to freak out. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Right. In my desk drawer, maybe? All set, I think. <sighs> is he gonna like this? I would like or is it, it too much? I want it. It's cute. Look at the dopey eyes and the floppy ears. It's adorable. Police Chief Brown asked Council to consider budget. Doc Strike to begin this week. Mayor on the mayoral election candidate Tom Pesci supports gun control. Money for local schools. Okay. I should probably check my email one more time before I go. No, I've already done that three times this morning. <laughs> it's me. Time to die against any two. The shape of yesterday, summertime sweet. You have nothing to say about it, though. Okay. Someone plays hockey. I don't know who that is. Michael and Tyler are so gonna hit it off. Is that your boyfriend? Or just a friend friend? Um, or is that a boyfriend? It's gonna oh, be you have to so see a crazy to see him after all these years. Oh, so obviously Tyler is transgender, but that's not like important. Like I know it's important to the story, I guess, considering it sounds like he said his mom killed him because he was transgender. But I'm just getting at the point where it's like it's it's not really something that's a problem. I, I hate when people are like, oh, you're transgender. Oh, I so should probably get rid of like this. Like, I mean, I can stream it anytime I want. Life the way they want but to. it makes me happy just to look at the box. Whether it's a choice or not, I need to bring this with business. me to Juno. And that's just how I feel about it. But, sorry. I just don't want to say the wrong thing and make people think I'm, like, not okay with any type of, like, LGBTQ thing because trust me, I am. I have got to make solid plans to see the Geminids. Nick, watch I wonder it. if Tyler'd want to go. Geminids. I don't know what those are. Is it a band? Hey, you wanna freeze your ass off watching burning rocks fall through the sky? Oh, so comic. Yeah, I might need to work on my sales pitch. Oh, was it you playing hockey? Okay. I'm excited though to get to know these characters. I love their designs. I love this game. Oh, that's definitely a boyfriend. Oh, so come on. Why do I still have this? Every time I look at it, it reminds me of how very single I am. <laughs> okay, so no boyfriend. Allison and Bobby, Caribbean Dreams, senior from 2012. Okay. Actually, let me just take a second to make sure that the audio and stuff is working so that I don't get too far with you not being able to hear me well or if I sound weird. Does that make sense? Okay. One second. Okay. I already looked at this stuff. What's in the box? Not What's here. in the box? Okay. Under the bed is probably important. I haven't practiced since high school. I'm probably super rusty. Or maybe not. I don't know. It's either probably in the closet or under the bed. Stars at this time of day. Hopefully, by the Why way, the noise is here? better. I don't know. You're looking for your keys. Why would it be under your bed? But I, there's a box, so oh, I'm assuming right. it's in there. I stashed them down here. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, it's a little troll. <laughs> so that's where you've been hiding. It's adorable. This feels like another lifetime. Is that you and Tyler? I can't tell from this far away. Got the keys. All right, I think I'm ready to go now. One more season. 
What am I even going to do with myself when it's over? <laughs> Get invested in the lives of real people? Find another show. There's so many. One day I'm going to fill more of this in. Maybe when the house is sold, I'll book some tickets. Okay. I guess we'll leave now. Wait. Yeah, I already looked at that. Okay. Oh. I didn't look at this. I could look at this artwork all day. It's Mars. You like space. I like that. Not the prettiest of my creations. Space. She weirdly kind of looks like me in the morning. Space and robots. I'm going to like Allison. Let's go. And now we're on to Tyler. Right? Uh, or Tyson. Alice. Tyler. She's going to be so awkward. She's going to be so awkward. Alright, let me read this. Dear Tyler, I know what you're thinking. A letter? Why all weird and formal? What's wrong with email? Well, I figured, hey bro, just wanted to give my twin a shout before reuniting after ten years of swank juvies. More like a letter ter more like letter territory. Whatever, you'll thank me when we're 90 and the machines have taken over, and you'll still have something to read by candlelight. See? Always thinking ahead. Anyway, I can't believe you'll be out in the real for real in a few weeks. What? Amazing. I'm definitely going to be awkward when I see you, so please try not to notice, okay? How was your last month going? Are you sad about leaving your mentees? I bet they're going to miss you. I took my tires. I got my tires replaced, so I'm all good to pick you up, and you can save the snark when you see my ride. She's been through a lot, and we can't all be car guys. Anyway, the veggies let me take the day off so we can go straight to the old house and get it ready for the sale and everything. Can't wait to never think about that place again. I really can't wait to see you. I don't know if it made that clear. If I made that clear, smiley face. Love you, Allison. All right, Vetchy, wasn't that the mayor? So she works for the mayor. Can't That's believe I'm about to leave this room for the last time. Okay. I'm pretty much done here. But I want to look I just around. Need to grab my goblin and I'm Goblin. Off. You have a goblin? Was that what the troll was? <sighs> Bombed I have to leave this behind. But the, the old dark, house would probably collapse destiny. if I blasted this inside. <laughs> like duplex duo. Uh uh Amigo an amigos, so side flipping. Been listening to this on a loop lately. Aw. And delight distribution by further. Man, the soundtrack to my angsty teen years. I'll leave it for the next rebel. Aww. They're gonna need it more than I do. You're so sweet. Is this is this her letter? But no. Okay. Hey, Aaron. You know I'm bad at this, but I just wanted to say you've been the best counselor and at-risk yet redeemable youth. Ha ha. Could want. Thanks for putting up with me and helping me in more ways than you'll know. Then you know. I'll try to make it count outside for fireweed. Survival is rebellion. Thanks, man, Tyler. Aww. So one of your counselors was actually very helpful here. That's good. Sometimes it's not like that. Gotta take testosterone every Tuesday and then refill on the last Friday. Take me. This box of junk treasure is now yours by first law of finders keepers. Cool. Denali. I need to get my application ready for next summer. You stay here. Educate the youngsters in classic cinema. A Quentin Bubbaluno, well, Bubbaluno film, Fire with the Fire in the Hole. Okay. Celebrate, educate, unite. Trans visibility march on Juno, March 31st, 2014, 5:30 p.m. Late. Brought to you by Juno Collation for Equality. So that was last year. By Herbert. Oh Herbert, but it said Tex. Oh, maybe it said thanks, THX. Songs of Innocence. I know most of these by heart at this point. By William Blake. The Transgender Men's, Gu Man's Guide to Healthy Masculinity by Alex Green. And The Shelter from Flood by Ina Beckford. I wish I could have finished this before I left, but God, it was a slog. Ugh, sometimes you get into a book and you literally just like feel like your eyes are dragging over each word. Man, he's going places. And Fire I'll be able to say I helped him on his way. Fireweed Youth Center, student art to show at Grindhouse, Tyler Ronan 20, matches young Tinglet Arch, oh, I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong, uh, artist with favorite local venue, shit I gotta do, tutoring, help Perez with college admission essay by E-O-N, Eon, I don't know, call Dr. Beck by regarding counseling sessions with Jeremy, meet Aaron regarding gardening program setup, miscellaneous, finish paperwork for escape with W2, uh, and letter November 2nd. Something for Allison. Hmm. Is there any way I can... 
No, that's someone else's problem now. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna miss that view. This does look very beautiful. I would love to live in Alaska. Is this the goblin? Hey, I thought little it was a guy. Troll. You're gonna be reunited with your sister soon. Aw. They have matching goblins. I love it. Alright. I got a collectible. The crafty, crafty goblins. Aw, they're so cute. The crafty goblins are two cunning little thieves who live under the princess's house. They're always getting into mischief. But they have good hearts. Aw, that's good. Alright, I like that. We're gonna get collectibles, and we're gonna oh, hear cool. young Tyler and or totally Alice talking now. about it. I can browse them in the browse them in the pause menu. I figured as much. All right, just doing a last little scan. Make sure there's nothing else to look at. I don't think they're. Oh, what's that? Oh, gonna miss these dum dums. Love you, Ty. Best mentor. Later, Tyler. We'll miss you. See you soon. Good luck. Vaya, Candidos. I think I read that right. Vaya Candidos. And you escaped. All right, let's go. Let's escape. Yeah, I think that's an H. Yeah, thanks. Please give me water and sun. Thanks. I thought it said Tex. I feel dumb. We have tomorrows for a reason. What's wrong with the teddy bear? Why do you keep looking at it like that? Go into the outside world. Ah! No! Why would you do that to such an innocent teddy bear? Oh, Alice and my like for you just went like down so much. No, I'm mad at you. You threw out my teddy bear. That was for me. You're mean. Hi, Tyler. No. You threw out Hi. my teddy bear. First time we see each other in ten years, and it's hi, Tyler. Hey. Oh, sorry, I. It's He's fine, teasing. Allison. Hi is a good place to start. God, it's good to see you. Oh. Likewise. Likewise, sister. You have anything else you need to get? Nope. This is it. My last ten years in a bag. A tiny ass bag. Then we should get going. We just have time to make the morning ferry. Okay. You look good in that. Thank Thanks. you. One of my mentees designed it. It's really good. Ooh, it's yeah, got a Phoenix he's on the so back. incredibly talented. I, I got a couple of local coffee shops to hang his art. Tyler oh. Ronan, shaping the leaders of tomorrow. Is that who yep. the newspaper was about? We're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you gonna miss anything about this place? Honestly, people. The other residents, my mentees, my counselor, Aaron. It took me a while to fit in. But once I did, it felt like home. Aww. They made me feel safe. Safe enough to be me. That's so That's great. Awesome. I'm really happy for you. It's scary. We planning to drive to Delos Crossing or push? So this you is are GB, welcome right? to walk. I'm assuming no, I'll assume take my not chances. Detention. Well, not detention Need one there, last but... look or anything? Looked. <laughs> Let's go. So it was some kind of GB. I'm not sure how it works. I don't really know. Yeah, residential center. So until he was no longer a... What's it called? A child of the system. <clears throat> he had to stay there. Make sure he wasn't going to stab anyone else. Although it sounds like it was self-defense, so I don't get that. Oh, sad music. No, really. I am 100% not creative enough to make that stuff up. Oh, and just last week, they had to turn the ferry around because a bear was on board. Really? No way. Someone heard a commotion in the back of a delivery truck, so they opened it up. And there was the bear, fat and happy on a literal mountain of empty chip Aww. bags. <laughs> you go where the food is. Oh, I can relate to that. So then what happened? I'm not sure. I think Are they couldn't get driving? him to leave, so they tranked him. Oh. oh. Wait for the ferry. Oh, buddy. Shot in the ass just for getting the munchies. <laughs> yeah, well, 
You know what they say, safety first in bear country. Well, they yeah, said it was but prevention is best. Right? Common sense goes a long way in it keeping does. them from getting shot. The bear is fine, Tyler. For now. Aww. You hear they've been talking about loosening oh. up regulations Are on trophy young? hunting? Oh, yeah. we're on the ferry. Cool. Higher bag limits, inhumane ground traps, even bringing back hibernation hunting. Very passionate about that. What kind of asshole gets off on killing a sleeping animal? I don't know. I'm not against hunting, but predators play a vital role in the health of our natural parks. A lot of what? things do. Why are you smiling? I'm being serious. Oh, I can tell, Ranger Tyler. <laughs> not yet, but at least I got the school part out of the way. Aw. So he wants to be a ranger? I can't believe you've got a bachelor's already. While I boast a half-completed certificate in accounting from an online college that may have stolen my credit card number. What? You'll figure out what you want. You have time. That's bullshit. You stole your credit card number? How are you feeling? How am like I feeling? I'm about to drive straight into a whiteout. Yes, and my that fog way. lights are dead. Okay. What about you? Allison? Whoa. Zoned out there for a second. Sorry. That's What's okay. Up? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that you're right here, standing beside me. Yeah. On our way to Delos. You don't have to apologize. It's a lot. What was that? Why did we take the ferry instead of the coast road? Because I didn't want to be stuck in the car with you for an extra two hours. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> we have to take the ferry. It's the only way to reach Delos from Fireweed. Oh. I see. Well, good. I don't think my stomach could have taken two more hours of how you handle curves. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you want to take over driving when we dock? <laughs> no. You're going to have to get back behind that wheel at some point, you know. You don't Look, have to. I put a Fireweed van nose first in a ditch. Hey, at least you missed the porcupine. Aww. You'd swear for a porcupine. I'm guessing things haven't changed much. You mean in Delos? Still the capital of East Jesus nowhere. Can't wait to get out of here. Guess that normal life you wanted didn't live up to your expectations, huh? I mean, having cable and full-time electricity was definitely a plus, <laughs> but no one ever forgets anything in a small town. You get that's marked fair. a weirdo and that's it. That's your life. Is that At my least fault? you had Michael. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I'd have survived high school without him. Bet you're gonna miss him when you move to Juno. How's he doing? Good. Good, good. Uh, but I haven't seen him much outside of work lately. Oh. He's been busy with his dance and helping his clan organize a potlatch. Okay. Is that smoke coming out of Stonehouse? Smoke? Which one is Stonehouse? Oh, I, that one has smoke. Guess someone finally bought that old shack. That, or the ghosts are cozying up by the fire. <laughs> Think the new owners know it's totally haunted? I'm sure Tina did her best to keep them from figuring it out. At least until the paperwork was signed. Ugh. That house always gave me the creeps. Those windows are like huge gawking eyes. Uh, you think people talk about our house this way? Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I do like this view though, the water and the mountains. So, we're really going back there, sky. huh? To Stonehouse? I mean, we're going home. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Think the house will sell? No interested buyers yet. Turns out, people don't line up to buy murder houses with no electricity. <laughs> At least it's got one hell of a view, unlike Juno. Hey, Juno has mountain views aplenty. It just also has people and fun. People you and still fun thinking are good. you might be my roomie? Thinking about it. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, Please. can I ask you a question? Shoot. I was told... Um, I mean, after you, well, graduated, I guess, and became a mentor three years ago, you still basically spent all your time at Fireweed, right? right? Pretty much. There were a few times I tried to go to these meetups for trans people in Juno, but... Something always came up. Aww. I probably should have put myself out there more, but it was better to be around in case the residents needed me. So you were free to come and go as you pleased? 
Yeah. Uh, why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Just being an overly invested sister. Okay. Curious how you spent your time. This is very pretty. I love the atmosphere of freaking Don't Not Games. They just, they got it. Allison? Yeah? Spit it out. Say what you gotta okay. say, girl. You need to promise not to freak out. Okay. What is it? It's a gift. It's a ring. From Eddie. Eddie? The cop? I know he's talking? not your favorite person, but... I'm sorry. When you said Eddie... I thought you meant Chief Brown, as in the police officer who arrested me. Come well, on, Ty. He don't. Gave and you your a adopted father, the oh. man who didn't let you visit me for seven oh. years. The Fireweed Administration backed him up, Tyler. They thought it was best for both of us. Uh. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It's a peace offering. And you're the two most important people in my Maybe life. He should have offered it himself. Please. For me. He can't buy my forgiveness with some cheap ass trinket. It's a gift, Tyler. You know what gift giving means in Clinket culture. Okay, Clinket, that's And what, what it means to refuse one. Fine. I'll take it, but I'm not going to wear it. Really? Really. Why not? Just so we're clear, this was for you, oh. not Chief Brown. He gave you, you know, a cookie. You could call him Eddie. Yeah. Or even. Uncle? <laughs> Hard pass. All right. You okay? <gasps> a whale? No way. She'll be the whale. Did you hear that? She'll be the whale. Place like home. I yeah. love that. Whales are such majestic and beautiful creatures. Would it ruin the moment if I said I needed to call home? Uh, yes. <laughs> Completely. Sorry. You Go suck. ahead and stop apologizing all the time. Okay, sorry. <sighs> Thanks. Can I hear it? So hey, weird being back on this yep. boat. I didn't die in a fiery crash. How are you? He took the ring, so I'd say the first steps have been taken. Huh. Yeah, the drive took longer than I thought it would. We're on the ferry right now. Uh-huh. I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I've been driving in this stuff for five years. It's all been fine. That's not going to happen. Okay, it's easy. Introducing the making of Devil's Club Tea, our way of life, community, and cultural programming sponsored by Huna Heritage Foundation. Learn how to harvest and process Devil's Club to make tea. Sign up today in Dallas Crossing on Sunday, June 19th. Contact Wilson at this number to sign up. Denali Expedition, discover the crown jewels of Alaska. Now open. Do drop in bed and breakfast. 258 Barrel Street, Hobart Cove, AK. House has walk in freezer and space for deer and fish processing. Canoe for sale. Oh, 17 canoe for sale. Strong and sturdy fiberglass transform for 5 HP outboard. $500 include oars, no bargaining, call or text this number. Clingit Dance Performance, a dance group that celebrates ancestry, community, and tradition. We invite you to join us for invitational drumming, singing, and dancing. Come share our sip and celebrate our culture. Monday, November 16, 2005, 6 p.m. Uh, free and open to public. Under the Sea. Hi Gastineau High School Winter Formal. Gastineau Winter Formal? Fancy. Wait, wasn't that Allison's high school? There's no subset. Protect our only home. Can I talk to Allison about it? Ooh.
Hi, Allison. Hey again. Fancy Hello. meeting you here. Damn. I watched the cell footage you sent me, but seeing you for real is wild. Yeah. It was terrible. You could smell the smoke all the way over in Delos Crossing. Two years later, and they haven't cleaned it up at all? The company went under after, and surprise, no one else is eager to take it on. Someone paid. Didn't Someone we just their off shit. that dock? Wait, no. That was on the way. Oh, uh, they pulled that one out. What? No. Man, so many good memories. Of pushing me into the lake? <sighs> the neighbor kid was the one who pushed you in all the time. Yeah. What's he up to? Bobby? Ugh. I, uh, kinda dated him. Ew. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I always seem to attract the assholes. <laughs> Another reason why I'm not dating right now. Fair. There's nothing like the open air. Hey, you sent your application to Denali yet? Uh, not yet. I need way more experience. You're not applying to run the entire national park. They've gotta have something entry level, right? Yeah, but I've done no internships, no volunteer work. They probably get hundreds of applicants, and I've got nothing to show. Come on, you don't know that. It doesn't hurt to try. Cannery's still going strong, huh? I'm not sure what people would do around here if it weren't. Is that it? Cool. All right, I'm gonna look around the ferry now. I kind of looked a little bit. Ecology matters. Hey, Allison, can we take the scenic route? Allison? Don't think she can hear you. Well, that's so it's not. Good call, by the way. Scenic route's longer. Views worth the time. Where are you headed? Uh, Delos Crossing? Same here. Huh. You from around here? Uh. Born and bred. Ah, you don't say. I moved to Anchorage from your age. Delos was mostly Alaska natives then. Huh. Hey kid, I, uh, I haven't been home in five years. Oh, so you owed your family a visit? I'll say. You may not know it yet, but your folks may get old real fast. Well, I know. Right. Mom's dead. Don't know about dad. Alex, by the way. Alex Gershwin. No relation. Huh? To George Gershwin. Um... Gershwin, the pianist. Folks are always asking for a related, so I try to hand it off fast. Fair enough. Oh. Uh, what'd you say your name was? I didn't. I'm Tyler. Tyler Ronan. I, uh... Ronan? Huh? Yeah. Ronan as in the... As Ronan's? in the one that killed his uh -huh. dad? Or mom? So, uh... Never knew those girls had a brother. We didn't. <laughs> uh, I, uh... Yeah? Nice talk. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your time in town, Thank you. I appreciate it. Isn't hunting season almost over? Almost. Want a draw for one of the last hunts of the season. Ooh. Oh, I can't look anymore. What? Oh, we're here. Okay. Let's go. Oh. Going back to the car. Room, room, motherfucker. God. I hate the cold, but this is so beautiful. I live in Canada and our views aren't half as good. I mean, like, we've got the Great Lake, but someone was found dead in there, like, last month, so it's not exactly very pretty at the moment. For for me, at least, kind of ruined it. Plus, like, the rivers that go into the lake, there's one near my house, and it's, like, in the summer, because of all the freaking sequel poop, it gets so contaminated that people aren't allowed to swim. It's gross. But this place looks nice. I like it here. Yeah, okay there. Huh. Yes, 
breathe in the atmosphere, absorb the sunlight, photosynthesize. Nothing better than just sitting outside of like a forest area, just listening to the animals doing their thing, chirping away. Used to think we had a lot of cicadas, but it turns out they were toads. Or frogs, I can't remember. One of the amphibious creatures. So this is where you killed your ma, huh? Could use a paint job. Looks a little, uh, a little worse for wear. Wow. It's basically exactly like I remember it. Only faded. Like a Polaroid left on a windowsill. Listen, I had a From photo. the outside, okay. it almost looks charming. Uh-huh. Charm's not the problem. Structural integrity may be an issue. Yeah. You think there's a chance whoever buys it will just tear it down? If someone buys it, they can do whatever they want with it. Hmm. You wouldn't care at all? Would you? Sure. Everywhere I look, I see a piece of one of our adventures. Everywhere I look, I just see her. Oh. Allison, we could go grab a bite. Considering he's the one that killed her, Start he's taking a lot better than no. she seems to. The only way to get this done is to do it. Okay. I guess we'll do it then. Uh, After you. Okay, I'm just looking around here, seeing where I should go first. There's a bird's nest. Marianne always spoiled the birds. She liked animals way more than people. I can relate to that. I like animals. Animals are better than people. There's a window, let's look inside. Uh, did you smoke something before you left Fireweed? The door is right there. That's very true. It was Mountain Blue. The strain that I prefer. Locked. Well, it's a good thing I remembered this. Really? Why'd you even let him go first if you had the key? You sure that's the right key? Uh-oh. Yes. Maybe someone changed the lock. That's weird. Who would change the lock on us? I don't know. We're screwed. It has been 10 years, right? Yeah, plan long B. Been since you lived there. Yeah. We find another way in. See, we didn't live there after we Never knew died. a locked door that could keep the crafty goblins out. Oh, yeah. the goblins We had a million you. ways in and out of this old house. Okay. At least one of them's gotta work. Sounds good. Cool. I could break a window. You know civilized people don't do that, right? Oh, so we're civilized now? Well, maybe not. But we are trying to sell this place, and broken windows aren't exactly... <sighs> the crafty goblins. I haven't thought about them in forever. Oh, okay, I guess we're changing the what conversation. should I say? Now. Us. Us. We almost spent more time as goblins than we did as kids. <laughs> oh, do you remember all the other characters? The moon hag, the ice king, the old bear? Oh. Most of them, I think. But the details are fuzzy. Hey, do you know what happened to the book with all the stories? No, no idea. But I'm sure it'll turn up when we clean this place out. Okay, I'm looking at this now. Remember how whenever we lost our toys in the sand, we thought the mad hunter had stolen them? We thought the sandbox would hide us from the mad hunter, remember? That's right, the sand was, what, supposed to distort his piercing eye? Okay. How many sand castles did we build with this? None that survived. Uh. Oh, I like that their little anchors are the male and female sign. At least it looks like what it's supposed to be. Uh. Ollie and Allison Vessel. Oh, you called yourself Ollie. Aw, uh, you're out of your element, little guy. How do you know? Maybe he's a snowfish. Hey, I think that's the same rake I cut my foot on. Wait, your foot? Wasn't that me? What? Oh, yeah. 
I think you're right. Okay. Twin telepathy type issue? This way. I love those birds. Doesn't seem like the greenest source of energy. Not like she had the money for solar panels. Yeah. Oh, what's down here? Uh huh. Uh huh. Anything to look at? Anything to do? Very cool. <gasps> Ooh, a dam. Um, no beavers. Too bad. The picture of him would have helped with the sale. Yeah. yeah. City people love cute furry animals. Teeming with wildlife, but not the kind that eats the insulation. Full of unique psychotic memories. Comes pre-haunted, so you can live out your paranormal investigator fantasy. Yep. <laughs> yep. We should well, do this for a living. Yes. Yes, we should. I love you guys. These characters I wonder if are growing up still real fast. fishing the lake. Uncle Eddie taught us to fish here. You still fish? Nope. You? Every Sunday morning. Once I could leave fireweed, of course. Alone? Totally. At first, it kind of made me crazy. And then I started to really like it. It was relaxing. Really? Yeah, you know. The lake, the water, the sky, me. Is a speck in the middle of it all. Aww. A speck with a spliff? <laughs> Always. Uh, I almost forgot how calm it was here. From far enough away, everything looks peaceful. It's yeah. totally different from when we were kids. How so? Pretty much looks the same to me. You haven't left, though. When I was a kid, I never stopped long enough to take it in. Now, I can't imagine walking by without stopping and staring. Let's hope we find some buyers who feel the same way. Yeah. All right. What's around here? What's this? You really want to go out oh. there? No, well, you're right. Why would you let me get this close and then not let me go on the dock? You suck. You suck, Allison. I'm going this way then. Oh, looks like a neighbor came by. It's funny. I can't remember any signs of them when we were kids. Probably because our mother scared the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah, she scared everybody else off too. You want me to sit with you? You need a break already, Ronan? No, just sitting, enjoying the view. Seriously, how are you feeling? Tired. I didn't sleep much last night. Mm. Yeah. I can't believe how we used to run around for hours without stopping. Yeah. Always a troll to run away from. Huh. Or a treasure to find. Very adventurous You definitely childhood. never lacked imagination. Marianne didn't either. It was the one thing that brought us all together. Even in the end. She told a new story, didn't she? That night. It was... Weird. What story? Like, how she is she different this than the bench, other ones? Right? If you're trying to scare me off so you can steal my seat, it won't work. No, I just remember us all sitting here after. I fell asleep and woke up really stiff later. I don't remember us sitting anywhere for more than a few seconds, which sounds exhausting now. I guess we're just old. At least we've got a few more years before we're as old as her. Huh. <laughs> Come Very on. Bitter. That's enough rest for us. Let's get inside. All right. I do like this, though. Exploring their childhood home. Oh, I did something. That seems to be the, 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 this action has consequences symbol. What's this? You need a hand with that? No, it should be fine. Okay. If we just get this board out of the way, I could probably squeeze through. So is that where we're going? So we need something to pry it off. It's screwed in pretty good. We need a screwdriver. Okay, let's find a screwdriver. First, I'm gonna check this side. Just in case. Are there multiple ways in? Or just the one? Open sesame. Let nope. me guess. It's locked. Yep. yep. No any other secret passwords? Hmm. Honeydew? <laughs> nope. 
Oh, can't use the shovel. Oh, oh, there's another shovel. Why would you At have least to? we don't have any use for this right now. Luckily. Remember the snowstorm in 2004? Marianne had us digging for hours. I remember she made it a game, at least. That's right. We made tunnels to escape the ice troll. You gotta hand it to her. She can make us do anything if she turned it into a goblin tail. Clever. Why would you look at this one? Oh, I turned to open the door. I see. I didn't actually read what it said. If anything. Nothing there? No use? Alright, let's go look for a screwdriver then. Remember how mad she'd get if we didn't use the compost? And she always knew when we were lying. Waste not, or kiss the planet goodbye. Okay, why is there so much compost if it's been ten years? Who's using your compost? Fruggies! I can't believe these are still here. Yeah, we should hide them so they don't frighten away potential <laughs> buyers. Hello, anything over here? Hello? Alright, let's check out this then. At least the shed's still standing. Yep. I don't want to think about what might be living inside it though. Oh jeez. Well, better alive than dead. Ugh, yes. Let's deal with that later. Okay. Plenty else to do first. Good call. Also it's locked, locked all right. Everything is locked. I don't like it. Should be something in here that'll work. Uh, Homemade cleaning products may be better for the planet, but they do not have the same shelf life. Oh, add it to the shopping list. She did not like us using her tools. She was probably just afraid we'd hurt ourselves. Or she thought we'd go on a rampage and tear up her precious plants. <laughs> and we would have, so. All right, well there's a hey, screwdriver. Hey, I see a screwdriver. Now all we need to do is get inside. Wait. I, um... What? I'm feeling something strange. Like what? Oh. 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 Remember. What is this shit? Don't leave this room until everything looks as clean as a whistle. Ugh. This is the millionth time I've gotten in trouble because of you. You and your big mouth. Hey, you were thinking the same thing. You just weren't brave enough to tell her. What good would it do? It's not like she ever listens to us anyway. Well, I'd rather scream it right in her stupid face than be a quiet little mouse. Aww. Oh, we forgot the key. We need to put it back. Maybe we could hide it somewhere. You know, for fun. Goblins are supposed to help the princess, not play mean tricks. Whatever, you're not fun. I'm only trying not to make her even worse. Hmm. Whoa, did that just happen? I don't know. But I Both saw it saw too. It? Okay. It felt like it did when we used to share thoughts with our voice. Oh, it so did. this is just normal for you. That was a memory you. of us ten years ago, right? I vaguely remember it happening. I think so. And, uh, that's new, right? Yeah. We could share thoughts and feelings. So that was just normal. We never replayed memories like that. I'm so sorry, what? Why would it happen? Twin telepathy is and real. And why that memory? I don't know. It's pretty eerie. It's weird, but our voice was always a good thing. Okay. This could be too. I'm feeling something again. What? Near the barn. What yeah. is happening? Me too. Hurry! Let's go see the silent frog. Coming. I'm coming. What? Stop sulking. I told you already. I'm sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. Guess you don't want to see what I put in the treasure room then. What? No, I want to see. The silent frog. I guess we know where to search now. We just have to remember which one is the silent frog. Damn. Where's the key? Seriously? Kidding. Oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. He's got a key. Nice job keeping a secret, buddy. Secret key. Unlock. Unlock.
there's, 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 what's this? Let me look, let me look, let me look. Take it. What is it? Huh. Who left this box here? What is it? It looks brand new. It it's... wasn't me. Has someone been out here recently? I guess it's your lucky day, bird friends. Oh, bird food? Okay. Oh, there was that tree house over got at the it. beginning. The first oh, thing I looked at. Oh, this for a screwdriver? You got a better idea how to get in? All right, all right, wait. I want to go feed the birdies. Yeah, that tree house over there. I'm hoping this is what it's for. I'm not entirely sure. Refill, yeah. These birds should get a reward for watching the house all these years. Thank you for your service, little friends. All right, now let's work on getting in the house. Screwdrive third. Should be able to get those planks off from under the deck. I hope I didn't miss anything that was out here, because we are moving on, hopefully. Oh yeah, easy peasy. I didn't want to do it for all of them. You sure you want to go in there? Yes. This was our very first den, remember? Who knows what lives down there now? Well, we're gonna find out. I live down here now. <laughs> Everything okay down there? Tyler? Ah! Oh, that's not funny! <laughs> then why am I laughing? Okay, fine. But you're still an idiot. Of course. But I'm All right. an idiot. I'm going in for real this time. Okay. I'll see you at the front door in a few minutes. Okay. Don't skip. Just, just... Okay. I don't want to miss anything. All right. Guess I'll go under here. Ouch! Are you okay? What happened? Uh, we're talking. <sighs> I just Put hit my head there. like an idiot. Wait. What? Where are you? Ty. Oh, shit. I'm outside. But I can hear you in my head. Our voice. It's back. This is oh, not supposed shit. to be normal. I, uh, don't suppose you remember how to get to the hatch. I, I think so. We'll, we'll figure it Dragons, through. straight ahead. Oh. Need to go left, I think. Left? Okay. I'm assuming there's nothing right. Anything to look at? I don't know. I want to look anyway. You were right. Nothing here. Of course I was. Oh. What's that? The Mad Hunter. Oh, it's the eyes are glowy. That's terrifying. The Mad Hunter is a cruel and ruthless creature. Once he starts hunting someone, he never stops. He'll chase his prey to the ends of the earth if he needs to. No one can escape his piercing eye. That's terrifying. Okay. I guess that's the thing. I would have taken the gold. Not even in your dreams. Delos Crossing Olympic Events, Rock Skipping, Elissa and Ollie. Then left again after the goblins. Okay. Hey, it's a moose. Wow. Can't say I ever expected to see you again. It's been a long time, buddy. Nope. It was on the right. My bad. That's okay. I found a moose. What, 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 what? Goblin den treasure room. Oh, okay. Wait. That was our treasure? It's just trash. We could make treasure out of anything. Our imaginations were that powerful. 
Pink. It always had to be pink. Marianne grilled us about all these missing dishes, but a goblin never gives up their treasure. <laughs> I found her old kite. <laughs> I think its wings have been clipped, though. Rest in peace, brave bird. Oh, thunderspell. I like your treasure. It's very nice. We got places to go. Past the treasure. Straight, Straight ahead. ahead. You know, I almost convinced myself our voice was just another childhood fantasy. Me too. We're the Mad Hunter. But we really are connected. The Mad Hunter. Why am I still afraid to say his name? He was Marianne's creation. She made all the creepy characters. Okay. Oh, hey. I am in the house. What's up? It's your boy, Tyler. Coming up through the floor hatch. A toboggan. Oh, memories. Aw, oh, this would be a nice house to grow up, other than like the whole no electricity thing. There's lights, there should be electricity. She like taking pictures. This reminds me of like my grandparents' house. about your sister. He likes it. Tyler! Go let your sister in. Coming! Hey, yo. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'll live. Good to hear your voice again. <laughs> yeah. Same here. So, coming in or what? You were knocking on the door like you really wanted Just to. Working up to it. You're okay. Oh, passing the threshold. Very important. Well, we're here. We're here. Here we are. Here we are. So, how do we get started? We figure out what to keep, what to trash, and see what else this house might be trying to show us. Of course, no lights, no power. <laughs> no power. I see what you meant now. All right, let's see. Broken shelf, broken jar, and the washing machine, broken. Lovely. The dryer never worked to begin with. Marianne thought dryers were straight up evil. Energy hogs. I hated hanging drippy laundry. Yeah, and I refused dry, to right? change for a few weeks once, so I wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> uh, machine yeah. repair. It's Bunch of numbers. Tessa? Question mark? Or huh. Marianne's room. Let's not go in there until we absolutely have to. She had a, a cricket door. She pinched every penny. Every penny. What's this? Hey, Mom. We are sorry. The vase got broke. We didn't know you love it so much. We need to be careful not to act up in the window room. Next time we will try and use good ju judgment. Please forgive us for doing bad things. I'm sorry too. We should be very careful. I'm very sad we made you cry so much. We should play outside instead. I will tell Ollie n not to be wild all the time and we aren't going to do it anymore. We are sorry. Oh, Allison was crying. Oh, he was crying too. They both have tears. Or maybe it was her crying when she read it? I don't know. There were tears on it, though. What are you reading? A letter we wrote her. To apologize for breaking that stupid face, remember? Bore your kids into good behavior. Great parenting strategy. 
old textbooks. Tessa gave them to us, right? Yeah, she thought we were gifted. What about you? You think you're gifted? I wouldn't be here if I was. What? Like, in this house with me? I mean anywhere near here. Uh -huh. I'd be working in Juno or Seattle or something. Uh -huh. I don't remember these. It's probably one of Marianne's unfinished masterpieces. There's two of them. Maybe they were us. In some weird way that only made sense to Marianne. I can't look at all the pictures? Oh, okay. Wow. I'm so embarrassed for us. Many Da Vinci's we were not. <laughs> we saved every drawing we ever did. Back There's a couple up. of these in my keep. Teenagers. Aww. She took so many pictures. I'd like yeah. to look at them. Like she had to document every second of our lives. You can keep some of them. If you want. <laughs> no thanks. I mean, I like the photos of us. But... I don't think I can forget that she was the one aiming the camera. You're that bitter about what she did, huh? I mean, I get it, she was against Tyler, and that sucks. But Tyler seems better with everything I didn't realize how much I miss the smell of firewood. I miss the cold winter nights curled up here. With big mugs of hot cocoa. Yeah. Oh, hot cocoa. Marianne was so tired, she was usually asleep on the couch. Ah, oh, that's why it was so nice. No, Marianne. We'd use our voice so we didn't wake her up. And then we'd be up all night telling stories and watching the fire die. And Marianne was none the wiser. Uh huh. She was trying to save the planet way before Al Gore made it cool. Has Al Gore ever made anything cool? Nah. I guess she was right about one thing. But you can't really blame anyone for not listening to crazy Marianne Ronan. Um, Mom? About me joining the hockey team? Mom! Sorry, what? Uh, not now. Maybe next year. But you promised! Keep whining, and my next year will become never. Uh -huh. Can you cut my hair? Your hair is fine. But I want to cut it short, really short. What? Look, I'm tired, and I'm busy. Jeez. Let's talk about this later. You always say that. Marianne said no to everything. Made me so pissed. She was always on edge those last few months. Yeah, and completely deaf to everything I was telling her I needed. Yeah. She pretty much always said no to me too. True, but it felt personal with me. I know that you're with your gender identity and everything, but don't think your sister wasn't affected as well. 2005. Of course. Fix the window. Hey, she drew some little hearts here. Oh. What? March 7th. Oh. Huh. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. I owe you like 10 birthday gifts. I think we can let that slide. What? You don't want me to buy you presents? You're gonna need your cash to get started. Oh. We've got a lifetime for gifts. Okay. But no presents from you either, then. Deal. <laughs> the last few months are almost all blank. Only a few appointments. Mrs. Most of them Doyle. canceled. Oh, so what kind of appointments? Hairdressing, I think. Oh, yeah. She did that for a while. We love you, Mom. Me too, but don't write here. Oh, I wanted to look at that. Wait. Can I not look at that? Alright, that was After January. all this time, I, I thought I'd feel more prepared to deal with this mess. Alright. I don't want them to be all upset about their mom and Bitter. I want them to be happy that they're with each other. That's why I'm not going like some fucking hearts. Guess we never had time to complete the collection. 
Uh. These came out of one of the prize machines at the Vecchi store, right? Yeah. Vecchi. You'd slide the quarters okay. inside on the little tray, and then magic out pops a sticker. Bad Fisher, not mint flex. Oh, hey, what's up? How you feeling about being back? <sighs> I thought I knew what to expect, but Seems the everything keeps catching me by surprise. Their relationship. My nerves are completely raw. I get it. How about you? You okay? It's not as hard as I thought, but then Fireweed was all about learning how to regulate your emotional response to stress. And that's working. I think it helps to focus on the fact that we're here to let it go. Well, I don't think I can let it go until it's actually gone. Can't hold it back anymore. Turn away and slam the door. String, glue, duct tape. The holy trinity of house repair. <laughs> Marianne loved having something to fix. I love fixing things too. Header installs, swapping cams. Uh. Those are car things, right? No, those are hot rod things. <laughs> well, keep up the car talk and you'll fit right in around here. I don't know anything about cars, so I hopefully I won't be put Best on the spot mom. about that. You think we ever really believed that? Or were we just trying to make her happy? Either way, it wasn't true. Sponsored, sponsorized by the local goblins, best mom. Huh. Huh. This bathroom still smells like Marianne. Yeah. Good scrub and we'll be rid of that too. <laughs> we were so competitive about who measured taller. Like we actually had anything to do with it. And after all that, it ended in a tie. <laughs> yeah, none of that crazy stretching I did made any difference. I tried to bury this dress in the backyard, but Marianne caught me. It was a pretty dress. Yeah, well, we both know pretty was never my thing. Uh-uh. What are we going to do with all her jewelry? Well, I'm certainly not going to wear it. Donation pile it is, then. Wow. I forgot all about her weird concoctions. And how she was always testing them on us. <laughs> like we were lab rats. Lab goblins. Handmade soap. Still here after ten years. Impressive. You could say that about the entire house. Fair. What would little Tyler think if he walked in here right now and saw me? Me little Ollie. <laughs> Hello, creepy mask. Can I look at you? Can I look at you? What? Oh, there we go. We should take down the creepy masks if yeah. we don't want to scare the buyers away. Oh, so now you don't want to scare someone with those masks. Hey, I just put on the mask and pretended to be a warrior. You were the one who got freaked out by it. Right. Not that she ever let me wear them very long. Nothing here. Here. Hi. Yo, what are you doing down there? What do you think I'm doing? Trying to figure out if anything in Marianne's mess is worth keeping. Any progress? Not really. What about you? What are you doing up there? Uh... I'm tired of her mess. Let's dig into ours. Right. Guess it's time to mainline nostalgia. Yes. Where'd you come from? A tale of two swords. All right. Ah, oh, keep pressing that button. There's nothing here to pick up. All right, going in the room then. Hello. Now this, this feels like home. Ooh. So much for my dream of being a hockey star. Marianne thought sports were too aggressive, too competitive, and too group thinky. <laughs> wow, look how small these beds are. We Dark were so little. Them. Yeah. Hey, there's another moosey. Hey, you. I just found your twin under the house. 
He's seen better days. Oh, this one wasn't mine. So yours was the one that was in the basement. That's sad. Look, it's the game we made. Lusion Tramway. What? That game never made any sense. Okay. Didn't stop us from playing all day. Dude, we were kids. All we needed were rocks and bird feathers. Hey, the postcard we sent ourselves from Juno. Forever alone. What? Aww. We barely had any friends. We even had to be our own pen pals. That's sad. Hello, Allison and Ollie. We are writing you from we are writing from the past. What is it like in the future? Anyway, Juno is super cool. We took the tramway all the way up. Ollie was scared. Liar. We got some books, but mommy went to the restaurant at night and forgot them. It was cool. There were a lot of whales at the ferry. No, there wasn't No there wasn't. There was they were in the water. There were a lot of whales on the ferry. No, there wasn't there. What, they were in the water, stupid. Anyway, here's a postcard to remind you how awesome we are. Especially me. A-N-O. Allison and Ollie Ronan. And then, yeah. Huh. Anything over here? I'm loving all the stuffed animals. Whenever we asked for a TV, she'd just bring home a big stack of books. I think she did us a favor with that one. Mm, you may not agree when we start digging into the HBO back catalog. <laughs> we'll see. Ugh. Some of our old toys give me the creeps. Very much so. Alright. Uh, it's the box. I'm just gonna look at this first. You know, if there's one thing you gotta give Marianne, it's that she let us explore our artistic side. Our you should have seen Eddie's face when I tried to repaint his car. Yeah, I bet Uncle Eddie didn't appreciate your artistic touch. I'd rather you call him Chief Brown if you're gonna be an ass about it. <laughs> really, Tyler? Be nice. How did you convince me to let you put this up? It was my favorite movie. Back then. Yeah, don't be mean. Alright, I'm assuming this is the box that the adjective says they have to look for, so... Look what I found! A book! What? Only our greatest creation. The Book of Goblins. <laughs> Seriously? It was in that chest the whole time? Uh... What are you asking me to press? What is that button? What are you... What are you asking me to press? I am, I am pressing all my buttons. All these stories. Oh, there it is. I had ideas for so many more. Marianne wrote a lot of them. Yeah. It's one of the only times I remember her being at peace. All right. The Book of Goblins. Uh, table of contents. So the frog earns the right to... There's a lot in here. All right. The frog earns the right to speak. Once upon a time, in an ancient... In deep forest, there lived a big frog on a small pond. She was peaceful. She was a peaceful creature who spent most of her time eating, swimming, and sleeping. From the morning to the evening, she did everything the smaller frogs did, except she did it bigger. She ate more, she jumped farther, and she was smarter, and she had made big, much more noise. Much more noise. Everybody in the forest could hear her loud croaking, and everybody was happy that they could. You see, it was easy to get lost in the forest, but thanks to the frog's loud noises, you could see his you could just as easily find your way back to her pond. Maybe it would not have been the same if the big frog had kept singing during the night, but she was much too lazy an animal to be active after dark. <clears throat> One day, an unknown visitor came to the forest for the first time. It was a young woman dressed in a beautiful gown. She was walking fast through the woods as if she was running away. She never looked back. Many eyes spied the princess. Many eyes spied the princess pass by. But no one dared to help her, for the mad hunter was on her trail. This is not our business, they said, and we had better look away, for the mad hunter was an unyielding man who loved nothing but hunting down prey for money and glory. Nothing could escape his piercing eye for long. So the princess walked alone, without help, until she was hopelessly lost in the big forest. Exhausted, she pressed on, with no idea where she was heading, as the hunter drew ever closer, digging, dragging, dodging in his pursuit. 
She continued this way until she heard a heavy croaking far off to her left, so clear and loud that the princess immediately made for the source of the noise. A few minutes later, she reached the big frog in the small pond, and the frog looked at her with a gentle smile. Help me, please, said the princess. I need to rest and t to hide. Ribbit, answered the frog, and the princess frowned. Please, stop making noise. The mad hunter is after me. Ribbit, the frog said again, so loud that the princess had to cover her ears. The creature began to jump every which way. What are you doing, said the princess. Stop all that noise or he will find us. But the frog kept croaking and jumping around, left and right and down. Ribbit, ribbit, until the princess understood the meaning of all this fuss. Cautiously, the woman climbed on the back of the big animal, and then, with a leap, the frog sent off away from the pond. The frog jumped so high and so far that even the hunter could not find where the princess had gone. With a few jumps... The princess was out of his piercing eye, and a few jumps more, she had vanished for good. The princess closed her eyes and let her clever mount carry her wherever the creature pleased. Less than an hour later, the big frog had reached the other side of the ancient forest, near the shores of a very deep lake. There she landed without a noise in front of a big wooden house that had been abandoned. Thank you, said the princess, covering the animal's snout with kisses. I only wish you could speak so I could have understood what you were trying to do sooner. As she pronounced those words, something incredible happened. The big frog was suddenly able to speak. Her first words startled the princess. The mad hunter is always at my heels. Now you're safe, and I've had my revenge. You can stay in this house. It has been abandoned for a long time, and no one will look for you here. And then, without looking back, the big frog jumped back to the pond. And this is how the big frog saved the princess, and how she earned the right to speak. The Bear and the Princess once upon a time, the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, just swiping at salmon, swiping at salmon on their way to the spawning, spawning grounds. Just as she, he'd got his paw on a particularly fat one, he heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating a salmon, but then she screamed again, and he tumbled over to investigate. Or he lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of a tree while a wolf snarled and snapped at the base of the tree. Old Bear would normally not go into the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolf's need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty. He knew he had to help. With a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again, and the wolf took off into the tree, his tail between its legs. The old bear fell down onto all fours and stared up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself? Asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the bear, but I promise you I won't eat you. The princess had no reason to trust the old bear except that he had kind eyes, so she slowly made her way down the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her, so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk you back to where you to your home? Of course, said the princess, and so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest back to the big wooden house. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear, a fresh can, a fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell. One spring, when, sun, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there, and he, she rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate, and she needed one. <clears throat> and he could keep her warm and provide her much more suitable den, and catch fish for her, and protect her from wolves. She, in turn, would brush out his fur and pick berries without smushing half of them, and scratch that one part of his back that he couldn't reach. And with all she took care of the gob, and with how she took care of the goblins, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. One day, the old bear came with a ring of a spruce and asked for the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You are a very good friend, and I appreciate all you've done for me. But I cannot marry you. You're a bear. I am a princess. It would never work. The old bear was in crushed. Can we still be friends, he asked. We will always be friends to the princess, but I will never marry you. The old bear and the princess carried out their friendship, and after one year he tried to gain her. He tried again to ask her to be his bride, but once again she refused him. This happened one year later, and one year after that. And then finally the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you have done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you, and that is how I will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house, and they are all I need. The wounded old bear, th this wounded the old bear deeply, but that was finally enough to stop his proposal. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts and fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bl bloomed bluebells. But the old bear never again asked the princess to be his bride, much as he w might have wanted to. And that is how princess befriended the old bear, and how she refused him. The bear fixes the house. Once upon a time, in an ancient deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. One night, a particularly violent storm shook the house and shook the shing shingles on the roof and the planks in the walls. It even shook the beams in which the house stood, blowing the whole thing near the, to the ground. The princess hid in a closet, leaving the house 
fearing the house would come down on her as she slept. In the mornings, the house was still standing, but it was barely da- it was badly damaged. The storm had blown shingles off the roof and planks off the walls and even bent a post upon which she, the house stood. The first two things she could fix, but the last concerned her. What will I do? Oh, the beaver fixes the house. What will I do? Despaired the wise princess, for though she knew many things, she did not know how to fix the big wooden house. Just then, the old bear came to see if the princess had any trouble in the storm. When he found her nailing planks back into place, he said, Stop, princess, let me do that for you. I'm happy to do it, said the princess, but if you want to help me with the roof, you may. When the pair was, were done with the roof and the walls, they examined the bent support post. I could throw my body against it, said the old bear. I am very large. He stretched up onto his hind legs, being sure that the princess could... What? appreciate how very large he was <laughs> and then charged straight into the post he threw his body against it with an impressive thud the impact moved the post but too far and it ended up bent the other direction the wise princess decided more precision was needed she thought of the very old beaver who kept an excellent crafted dam perhaps she can help she went looking for the very old beaver and found the industrious animal hard at work slapping down mud on part of her dam that had been blown apart in the storm most of the structure was unharmed because the beaver was very good at building things the princess knew she had come to the right place beaver she said my house was damaged in the storm would you help me fix it i believe i could do that yes said the old very old beaver and she paused at fixing her own den to follow the princess the very old beaver examined the big wooden house and nodded. It will be an easy fix, she said, and she set out writing the post with loud slaps of her tail. When she was done, the wise princess stroked the beaver's be- head. Thank you, beaver, she said. The wind blew the shingles off the roof and the planks off the walls and even bent this post. Now, thanks to you, I still have a home. Think nothing of it, said the old very old beaver, who returned to work on her den, w- den once again. That winter, the very old beaver grew ill, very ill. She was not able to fix her den, nor get gather food, nor to gather food. When the princess found out she was about to deli- she set about delivering meals to the beaver. She brought stews and corn and beans and baskets full of bark and twigs from the beaver's favorite aspen. One day, the wise princess noticed that the beaver's den had begun to fall apart, and she set about fixing it. And though she was not as talented as the very old beaver, she fi- her f- the fix kept the creature warm and dry. <coughs> "'Thank you,' said the very old beaver. "'Of course,' said the princess. "'You helped me when the storm blew my house near to the ground. "'Thanks to you, I still have a home, and I am happy to do the same.' "'The princess continued to nurse the old beaver "'until one day she came to the dam, and the forest was still. "'No birds sang, no branches rustled, "'no small things skittered within the underbrush. "'Oh,' said the princess, staring sadly at the dam, "'for she knew the old beaver had passed on. "'Goodbye, my friend.' "'And that is how the very old beaver saved the big wooden house, "'and how the wise princess repaid her kindness. "'The princess's party.' Once upon a time, in a deep and unaged forest, the princess was melancholy because it was one year anniversary of when she had run away from home. Sensing her sadness, the forest friends showed up to her door. They were headed by the pelican, pious and attentive, and organized by the moose, stal- stalwart and farsighted. The old bear was there with claws, with his claws so sharp, as well as the big fox prattling away. Even the haughty muskrat, who almost never had time for anyone, had to come. The bear invited her to ride on his back, promising no wolf would when Harry okay Harry her path and then the animals set out to a fairy glen where the fabulous party had been prepared there was a buffet of seafood for the, from the seafood the pelican had served from her never up deep beak the air was filled with winking fairy lights and the moose had arranged after clouds filled the sky the gracious the gregarious frog mixed up the fizzing drinks only the muskrat had done nothing in the particular mooching off nothing in particular mooching off everyone else's hard work the princess had a very good time with her party, such a good time that she forgot to say thank you to any of her friends. Noticing this, the friends devised this little bit of mischief. When the princess went to open her gift, she found the three identical boxes at the edge of the glen. Plus, puzzled, she turned around and gasped. The entire party had vanished. Because you have taken your friends for granted, said the naughty fairies. We have hidden them from you, but we, will, but we like games. Guess who has given you each of these presents, and you will get your friends back. The princess opened the first box. Inside, there was a torch, which she, which when lit, revealed the truth. Huh, said the princess. Someone wants me to make sure I don't get lost in the woods when it's dark, and I always see right from wrong. Which of my friends would give me a gift like that? She opened the second box. Inside, there was a magic sword, which would leap right out of the bearer's hands to defend them. Huh, said the princess. Someone wants to make sure I am protected. If I am ever under threat, which, my friends would, which of my friends would give me a gift like that? She opened the third box. Inside, there was a bag of coins, like that always provided money... If it was for something the bear may bear truly needed, said 
Huh, said the princess, someone wants to make sure I have money to buy food when I am hungry and clothes for when I am cold. Which of my friends would give me a gift like that? The princess thought about her friends and then smiled certainly. Fairy, she said, I have been very, I have been thoughtless, but I appreciate all that my friends have given me and all that they have done for me. She gave her answers and then the vexed fairies were forced to restore the party in a flash of colorful light. One by one, she gave the animals a hug and thanked them for the presence, the party, and all that they had done to help since she had moved into the forest. And that is how the princess celebrated her first anniversary in the woods. The Goblins in the Ice Cave <clears throat> Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were playing near the glacier, and they discovered a hole in the ice. They crept through the gradually widening passage of the, and found themselves inside a spacious ice cave. Lights filled, spilled down the undulating blue wall blue-white walls in a way that made them look like electric waterfalls, and a column made up of hundreds of icicles stood in the center. This was the time before the goblins had settled beneath the old wooden house, and they had nowhere to live. Perhaps we could live here, they said excitedly. Moments later, the sound of stomping feet interrupted their play, and they realized that perhaps someone had already lived here. They hid behind a boulder and to wait to see who was coming. The old bear sauntered into the caves, shaking powdered snow from his coat. He let out a giant yawn to lay down. In the corner on a pile of tree bows, snoring within seconds. When they were sure he was deep asleep, the goblins conspired to claim the cave for themselves. They, sh they chipped away at the glacier until they had filled the basket full of ice, and one hid, and then they hid one more behind their boulder and started tossing chunks of it onto the sleeping bear. Now the bear was not the smartest creature in the forest, so when he woke up covered in ice, he roared, My cave is collapsing! He lumbered to his feet and ran outside before the whole thing could come down on top of him. The goblins crept out after him and did a loop before coming back to find him sitting outside. What happened, they asked. My cave, it's collapsing, he bemoaned the old bear, and it's time for me to hibernate. Where will I stay for the winter? I had, it had not occurred to the goblins that the old bear had settled for the winter, and they felt a little bit bad. But they did not want the old bear to know what they had done, so instead they offered to help find him a new den. Together they searched. They inspected the cavernous stone and hollow trees and deeply pocketed knolls. Nothing they found was as beautiful as the ice cave, but the bear was settled on a packed car... A pack car than a packed what? A packed earthen. That does not look like earthen. A packed earthen hollow, and that would keep him warm and dry for his long sleep. Good night, Heon, and the goblins gleefully returned to their new home. In the spring, the old bear woke and went for a nice long walk to stretch his leg. The path he took. The path he took. His path took him right to his old cave, where he heard the curious sound of laughter. Making his way inside, he was surprised to find that his cave was intact. And the goblins were inside, playing a game. What is this? growled the old bear. The goblins stopped playing and looked ashamed. We're sorry, old bear, said the goblins, but we had nowhere to live, and it's just so beautiful. We didn't realize you were here. To, you were about to hibernate, and then we, wouldn't bear, we couldn't bear to tell you that what, what we had done. The old bear was angry at the trick, but the young goblins looked appropriately sh shamed, ashamed, so, and so he said, Come with me. He led the crafty goblins to the bellow in which he had hibernated for the winter. You can have this spot, he said, and look, someone had built a big wooden house right over top of it. No one lives there now, said the old bear, but one day maybe someone will, and the earthen hollow was not as beautiful as the ice cave, but it kept the goblins warm and dry, and they were excited that someday they might have something, someone living overhead, someone who baked cakes and tolerated their mischief. And that is the story of how the goblins tried to steal the cave from the old bear and how they got their own instead. The Princess and the Two Thieves Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. The house was built from the strong wood of the forest and kept the princess warm and safe. The princess was not a native of the forest, but she never spoke about where she had come from, for it made her cry. She did not have many friends, but that was how she liked it. The forest was big and deep, and many paths led to her house, but not many visitors passed by. The princess was happy to be left alone in the big house in the deep forest. She knew that the forest would provide for her, but the that is generosity, but it, that its generosity had to be respected, so she only took what she needed, and for a long time life was just fine for the princess in the big wooden house. One winter day, when she when snow blanketed the earth and the ice bent trees below, the wise princess realized that food was disappearing from her house. It was not much at first, only a few fruits and nuts and eggs vanishing in the night. Maybe it's the birds, she said, or the mice. And for a time, the princess was okay with losing some food, for the winter was long and little creatures needed to eat too. But then small items started to disappear as well, spoons and plates, forks and knives and blankets. It was as if every time she was in one part of the house, something disappeared from another room. That can't be birds or mice, said the princess. I think I have a thief. So she went outside to look for traces of the s in the snow, of noises in the wood, 
and noises in the wind, but there was nothing to be found, nor to be heard. That's strange, the princess, said the princess. Maybe the thief is hiding inside my house. For many days she hunted, looking behind every curtain and under every bed, the, or under the, behind the curtain and under the bed, in the attic and the chimney, behind the poles and under the carpets, but she found nothing. As she searched, the food kept disappearing, night after night. I will make a cake, frowned the princess, a big cake, with every egg and fruit and nut I still have, so that I will only have one thing to keep my eye on. She spent the whole day making a cake and using everything she had left. The cake she made was so big that she could barely car hardly carry it. If I manage to protect the cake, I'll be able to survive the long winter, she said. So she added a lock to the oven and she kept the big cake in safe inside. But the next morning, the lock had been opened and the cake had disappeared. At first, the princess cried because that cake was the last of her food until the snow melted. But then she noticed two trails of tiny feet in the, spill in the spilled flour and she followed the tracks to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. This is how the princess realized that two tiny thieves were living under the wooden house right below her feet. The princess makes new friends. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a wise princess in a big wooden house. She had been living alone just fine for a very long time until the day she noticed food and small items were disappearing from her house. The, th the thefts went on and on until one day, until the day of her last cake, which had been made with all the last of her eggs, and the last of her fruit, and the last of her nuts, and the last of her flour. Well, the last of the cake was stolen, too. And all that she had found at the scene of the crime were two trails of tiny feet in the spilled flour, leading to a hidden hatch in the floorboards. The princess did not try to open the hatch, nor did she try to break it. She was too tired and too hungry. All she could do was cry in silence, alone in the big wooden house, hidden in the ancient and deep forest. She cried for a long time, until evening arrived, and then she cried some more. Suddenly, a tiny voice came from under the house. "'What is that noise you make?' it asked. "'We do not like it. Not one bit. I'm crying, because you two are me to me, wherever, whoever you are. You stole all the food I had, and I will starve before, I, before the end of this long and all cold winter.' The hatch opened just a peep, revealing two frowning faces peering out into the darkness of their hideout. Out of, from the darkness of their hideout. "'But we are hungry, too,' said the second creature. We have been hiding in this cave for a long time, and now the winter is upon us, and we need to feed. The princess dried her eyes and smiled at the two goblins. If we were friends, we could share the cake you stole from me. The two thieves spat and smirked. A friend? What is that? The princess frowned, for she realized that the two tiny thieves were as lonely as she was. A friend is someone you love and care for, someone you would never hurt. We never hurt each other, and we care for each other, said the golden goblins at the same time. Does that mean we are friends? Yes, that's exactly it. And if we are friends, would you not hurt us? Of course, friends must trust each other. The goblins shook their little heads. We trust no one, for no one trusts us. Their words made the princess cry again, for now she understood that the two creatures were not only as lonely as she were, as she was here in the big wooden house, but they had been lonely since they were born. You're making that noise again, frowned the goblins. Please stop that, for it makes us unha feel unhappy. Are you a witch? Is this some sort of magic? It makes you unhappy because we are friends, said the princess, but we do not know you. You are not like us. Sometimes friendship comes right away, even between people who are very different. Does it mean we can't steal from you anymore? Does it mean we can't steal from you anymore? Yes, but that's what we do. We are crafty goblins who steal under, who live under your house. Then maybe we could arrange something. Is that what friends do? Yes, I believe they do. And this is how the princess and the crafty met the crafty goblins and how they became friends. The bear's big paws. Oh my God! How many stories are there? <clears throat> Once upon a time, in a deep ancient forest, the old bear was out looking for snack for a snack when he spied a bee's nest in a hole high up in a tree. The tree was so dry and brittle, but the old bear was hungry, and so he made his way up to the nest. But when he got there, he found his giant paw couldn't fit in the hole. Determined, he tried to force it inside, but the effect, effort caused the branch below him to snap. The old bear tumbled to the ground and landed with a painful oomph. He lay there, stunned by the from the fall, which all of a sudden something bit him. The bite was followed by another, and another, and another. Cap carpenter ants were swarming up his legs. You see, they had been nesting in the branch, and they did not appreciate being forced from their home. The old bear howled and jumped to his feet to dance around as he swatted and snapped, but his big paws couldn't do much about the tiny ants. When he finally managed to squish or scare them off, the old bear heard someone laughing. The crafty goblins had seen the whole thing. Clumsy old bear, they teased. Those big old paws aren't good for anything, are they? Then they, spied, then they sped off, leaving old bear's pride hurting just as bad as his body. He lumbered through the forest, hungry and sad. Maybe I'm just a clumsy old bear, he moaned. My big old paws aren't good for anything. At that moment, the old bear heard a sad, sad noise. What's that? he wondered as he followed the sound to where a mountain goat stood atop a boulder high up on a hillside. Old bear, she cried. Old bear, please help. My kid is stuck. 
Sure enough, a tiny mountain goat was trapped inside the stones, ble bleeding sadly. The old bear began to walk towards them, and they stopped. I'm probably going to make it worse, he thought. But then the goat kid started to bleed even louder, and the old bear put away his fear. He climbed up to where the goat was trapped, careful of where he stepped, and trying to think of how he had only just fallen off a tr out of a tree. Every now and then, the ground would slide away from under his feet, but he kept going. When he reached the goat kid, he put his mighty paws against one of the boulders and began to push. At first, it didn't budge, but he dug in and pushed even harder. Finally, the boulders parted just wide enough to let the kid scramble out to safety. The old bear released the boulder and let a roar of triumph. Roar! Thank you, gushed the mama goat. She and her kid bounded off, the, off up the mountain. The old bear watched them with a smile and then made his way back down the hillside, wiggling his rump in triumph as he went. To his surprise, the crafty goblins pointed at the bottom of the hill. We saw the whole thing, they said. We were wrong. You aren't just a clumsy old bear. Your paws are good for helping others. The old bear forgave the goblins for doubting him, because he had doubted himself just as much. He never again thought his paws weren't good for anything, even though sometimes they weren't always great at everything. And that is how the old bear proved that his heart was bigger than his paws. The moon hag loses her name. Once upon a time, deep in a cold lake in an ancient forest, there lived an old sea seal who was powerful witch in disguise. She was mean and cruel. She liked nothing more than to swim in the deepest part of the lake where the light was dim under the ice, admiring the corpses of the many victims she tricked into the water over the years. She was so hateful that only sh sh only the cold water of the lake could keep her cool. Their most prized possession was a tin mirror sold to her by the secret keeper, and she kept it in a chest at the bottom of the lake. It was no ordinary mirror. If you looked in it, you would be see a reflection of who you truly desired to be. And for one hour, the mirror granted you the power to appear as that person. Whenever that boat, whenever a boat or you unwise traveler approached the edge of the lake, the old witch used the mirror to appear as the beautiful woman she always wished to be, and with this disguise, she lured the unfortunate sailor or wanderer into the deep of the cold water. There, the old seal forced the victim to become her servant, and when she was done with them, they joined her collection of corpses in the deepest part of the lake. One day, when the old seal swam down to her den under the lake, she discovered that someone had stolen her mirror. The chest where she had kept her most prized possession had been first forced open, and now it was empty. Who would have committed such a crime? Who had dared to deprive her of her only treasure? The old seal went mad, and her anger heated her water of lake around of the lake around her. For a time, everyone was happy with the temperature change, but the water suddenly became sweeter and the air, for the for the weather suddenly became sweeter and the air warmer. But after a few weeks, scenes started to get things started to get ugly. First, the fish began to die off, for they could not live in the hot water. Then the glaciers began to melt, and the water in the lake rose and spilled out, flooding the forests and the meadows. And finally, the weather grew so hot that even the ice king himself was awakened from his long sleep and decided to see what was going on. It was the deep part of the lake that he found the mad witch steaming among the corpses of her victims, so angry that the lake was about to boil. It only took a few minutes for the Ice King to understand what had happened, and demand that the thieves present themselves before him. The thieves have no choice but to appear, for one to, for one, no one to dare to disobey the Ice King. The crafty goblins presented themselves the mirror in hand. "'Why did you steal the mirror?' said the king. "'We were curious, and we just wanted to see what we really wanted to be,' apologized the goblin. "'But the stupid mirror is broken. We look the same.' "'That does not mean it did not work,' smiled the king. "'Now apologize and give the mirror to me, for, me, for it is too powerful to be used by thieves or, old, or a mean old hag.' The goblins apologized and gave the mirror to the ice king, but the old seal was still angry. And what about me, she asked. I have been deprived of my treasure, and I demand compensation. The ice king frowned as he spoke again. Old hag, you are mean and cruel, but I concede you have been wronged. For now, you will be allowed to leave the lake and walk on earth as the hag you really are, but only when the moon is full. And you goblins, you had better stay away from the lake, for I won't protect you from the moon hag's wrath. And this is how the two goblins forced the moon hag to change her name. The goblins trick the mad hunter. Once upon a time, in a castle just beyond the ancient and deep forest, the mad hunter was punished by the gold, gold lady for fa failing to return to, with the wise princess. For your failure, said the gold lady, I will take your left hand. You will return to the ancient and deep forest and hunt the wise princess, and if you bring her back, I will return your hand to you. Fail again, and I will make you take your right hand. The mad hunter could hunt with just his right hand, but if he lost both his hands, he would never be able to hunt again, and would no longer be the mad hunter, but only a mad man. So the mad hunter returned to the ancient and deep forest, searching f with his piercing eyes for the p wise princess. The crafty goblins were 
out searching for mischief when they saw the manhunter on the prowl. We cannot let him find the princess, said the goblins, and so they devised a plan. It was a, wa it was a wash day, so the princess had hung her beautiful gown out to dry. They stole it from the line and stuffed it in full of straw, and then returned to where the manhunter was scourging the paths of the forest. As the manhunter turned down the path that would have led him to the big wooden house, the goblins danced the straw princess in and out of view in the opposite direction. The ruse worked, and the hunter began fixing... The hunter fixed his piercing eye on them and followed. Through the, day, through the day and into the night, they led him away from the princess. As night fell, the crafty goblins realized the error in their plan. The mad hunter was now hunting them. If he caught them, he would, be not, he would not be kind. So they put their heads together to come up with a plan. It did, not take them really long to, it did not take them long to realize where they should go. They led the mad hunter to the edge of the deep, deep and icy lake, where, and when he came into view, they weighed the fake princess down into the stones, dropped down with stones and dropped her into the frigid water, careful not to plunge into the depths themselves, lest the moon hag take her revenge on them. The mad hunter removed his clothing and drove, dove in after her, the fake princess. He followed the shape of the sinking princess deep into the chilly water, down below where the ice covered the lake's surface. Finally, he caught her, but when he spun her towards him, he realized that she had no head and that her body was stuffed with straw, and then he felt a slippery fin brush his shoulder as the moon hag loomed overhead. The next morning, the princess went to retrieve her gown from the clothing line and found it was gone. She immediately suspected the goblins of mischief and called, Goblins, did you take my gown? The goblins emerged from their cave and nodded sadly. Now what will I wear? asked the princess, sad and angry, that she had lost her only dress. Let us explain, said the goblins. So they told the princess the story of the mad hunter, and then they produced the, his clothing, which was a bit large for the princess, but much warmer than her beautiful gown. She immediately forgave them. Thank you, my friends, she said, for rescuing me and for this clothing, which will keep me much warmer in the winter than my beautiful gown. The mad hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the moon hang, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful as a servant. Lo, he plotted the day he would emerge to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. And that was the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the mad hunter. Oh my god, there's more. Okay. The pelican helps her friend. Once upon a time in a deep and aged forest, an earth winter storm blanketed everything in snow. There was an early winter storm blanketed everything in snow. It was early in the year so that the creatures of the forest were not yet ready for an ordinary winter, much less a bad one, and everyone agreed the storm was a sign of the Ice King had plans for the long, cold winter. The princess had grown up in the kingdom where it was sunny all year long, and the goblins were very young, so no one in the big wooden house knew how to prepare for such a winter. The house was not well insulated, and they did not have enough food or f fuel. Only the pious pelican noticed their plight, and when it came to fly south for with the other birds, her heart was heavy with sadness. What can I do? She thought. I'm a migratory bird. What if? I, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The time came to go, and the pelican struggled to take flight. It felt as though a leaden weight struck right in the center of her chest. What can I do? She thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? She managed to shake off, take off, but only just barely, flapping fiercely to catch up with the other birds. As a pious pelican began her journey, the storm picked up, battering her to and fro. She had fallen well behind the flock, and she was already growing tired, but for all her challenges in the air, she could tell things were much worse on the ground. A deep freeze had settled over the forest. The leaden weight of her chest grew heavier as she thought of the princess and the goblins. What can I do, she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The storm intensified, and the pelican was in a total whiteout. She knew she should have despaired, but all she could do feel was the weight that had grown and grown until she had thought she might drop out of the sky. She had felt called to help she had felt called to help the uh, she had felt called to help the princess and the goblins, but she had ignored it. I should have stayed, she thought. It was the right thing to do, and now I'm lost, with no way to make it right. Suddenly she was plucked from the sky and deposited into the hall of the Ice King. Pelican, he said, You are flying in circles around my mountain. I was lost, she said. Weighed down by the weight of my guilt in my heart, the Ice King stared at her sagely. Is it guilt, or is it something else? Open your beak. He reached down, and inside of her, pulling out a glowing stone, the pious pelican was surprised by how it filled her with warmth, chasing away cold and her doubt. You know what you must do, said the Ice King. The pious pelican f flew straight out of the straight to the big wooden house. Snow had already blown in through its many cracks, and ice crept through the floor across the floorboards. She found the princess and goblins huddled in front of the quiet hearth, slow, nearly frozen solid. No, she cried, and then she placed the stone on the princess's lap. The warmth of a, 
of it spread through the whole house, the whole of the house, melting all that had frozen. The princess threw her arms around the pelican's chest, and the goblins clung to her legs. Thank you, they cried. You're welcome, said the pelican, smiling in deep satisfaction. What is that? asked the princess, staring at the wonderful stone. At first, said the pelican, I thought it was my guilt, but when the ice king pulled it out of me, I realized it was something much more powerful. Just then, the storm broke, and the skies cleared, and the pelican filled the big wooden house's larder with food from her bright beak, and then she took to the skies, lightened by the knowledge that through her charity, everyone in the big wooden house would be warm and fed until spring. And that is the story of how the princess, the pious pelican saved the wise princess and the crafty goblins from the long winter. <sighs> Okay, is this all? Okay. Alright. Uh, the goblins are in their voice. Alright, once upon a time in the deep ancient forest, the crafty goblin spied on the secret keeper as she made her rounds, gathering up secrets to the animals of the forest for, she had for sale. How, said the first goblin, does she get people's secrets? Do you suppose she peels open their heads? Let's find out, said the second. So the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched her until the stalwart moose came to her, heads hanging low. It was my fault I chose the unnerving, tra uneven trail. I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into the cell wart moose, moose's eyes. Though the goblins couldn't hear anything, they knew she was speaking to the moose, for the si secret keeper spoke in people's minds with the gift of the voice. After a few minutes, the, stall water, the stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter, said the moose. Did I just give you something? I. The secret keeper l nodded, haunching, l haunching, handing him a coin. The stalwart moose nodded and plodded along down the trail. He spied the goblins hiding in the woods and narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently, and mo the moose was forced to carry on, because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what the secret was, said one of the goblins. Let's go buy it. Uh, so the goblins approached the secret keeper before she could stow away moose's secret. We want to buy moose's secret. What do you have to trade? asked the secret keeper, but her voice filled their her voice filled their minds. The goblins produced a silver handed hairbrush that they had stolen from the princess, and the secret keeper nodded. And that is how the goblins came to know the moose's mate had tumbled down a cliffside to her death. The secret keeper moved on, and the first of the first of the goblins said, I want to know more. So the goblins followed the secret keeper, hoping to find what she had hit where she had hid the secrets. They followed her to the peak of the nearby ridge and watched as she stowed the rest of the day's secrets high in the cloud. When she was gone, she climbed a high spruce tree that had disappeared into the misty sky. When they reached out and just managed to dip their hands into the clouds, their heads were filled with me memories, and they snatched their hands back out, as if they had just thrust them into boiling water. Tears poured down their cheeks. That was how the secret keeper found them, crying in the tree. "'You stole my secrets,' said the secret keeper." Give them back, the crafty goblins stopped crying because they saw an opportunity. What will you give us in exchange, they asked. I will give you back the silver hand don't hairbrush, offered the secret keeper. For so many secrets, pshaw, you don't have to offer more than that. You'll have to offer more than that. What if, said the secret keeper, I share the gift of voice? The crafty goblins, goblins grew excited. That'll do. So the secret keeper shared the gift of voice with the goblins, and immediately they found that they could hear one another's thoughts and feel each other's feelings. The crafty goblins gave back the secrets that they had taken and ran to the big wooden house, they, where they found the princess was preparing food. They tried to peer into their, her mind, but they found it was blank. They tried to speak to her using only their own minds, but she could not hear them. It seemed the secret keeper was craftier than the crafty goblins, for she had only shared enough of her power to let the goblins use the gift of voice with each other, and not with the whole of the forest. And that was how the goblins stole the, the gift of the voice from the secret keeper, but why they could only use it with each other. The big frog is punished. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a big frog in a small pond. She was no ordinary frog. She had been given the gift of speech which she had, when she had saved the princess from the mad hunter. From the morning to evening, she did everything other frogs did, except that she knew how to speak. Everybody in the forest could hear her loud voice, and everyone was unhappy with that because she never stopped blabbling, babbling. She babbled about the too hot sun and the too deep pond, about the rain to come, and about the delicious flies she had eaten. All across and all the creatures talked. Across the forest, all the creatures tolerated the endless noise until one day they could not deal with it any more. They asked the big frog to quiet down. I can't, said the big frog. This is what I do. Before the princess kissed me, I croaked all day and lo all day long, and you like that. I did it. You like that I did. This is the same, except you can understand what I say, and now you find it irritating, but I can't change what I am. Can I? Could you? All the creatures agreed that she was right, and that it was rude of them to ask big frog to stop doing what she had always done. So they returned to their own parts of the forest and let the big frog do what frogs had always done, jumping and talking and talking some more about the too hot sun and the too deep pond, about the rain to come and the delicious flies they'd leave, they have eaten. And for a time, it was all right. But in the forest, word travels fast and everyone has a story to tell. 
The big frog, being who she was, gossiped and gossiped about everything she overheard. Everything she overheard. She told the bees that the old bear had stolen their precious honey two years ago, and that she sh she told the beaver that the eagles had stolen their precious wood. She told the deer who had killed her fawn that she had told the tall spruce tree, and she had told the tall true spruce tree who carved a cuss word into its bark. Once again, everyone in the forest asked for the big frog to keep quiet. For now, everyone had a grudge against everyone else. But once again, the big frog would not listen. When I was just a frog, he never paid any attention to me, and nobody helped me when the mad hunter hunted me for sport. This is only right from wrong. I won't stop talking. The fuss went on and on, and the noise was so loud that the ice king himself awoke and decided to see what was going on. Silence, smelled the king, and even in the big Fro Even the big frog stopped babbling. Once the forest was quiet again, the ice king patiently listened to what each and every animal of the forest had to say until finally he made, his, made up his mind. Big frog, you have abused the gift of speech, for you have only used it to get revenge, despite knowing the words that can be hurt. That words can be hurtful. You threw them around without caution, and you caused too much trouble. The big frog opened her mouth to protest, but the ice king raised his fingers before she could say another word. Since you received the gift of speech for a good deed, I would not dare take it away from you. So here is your punishment. I will tell you the biggest of my secrets. It is a secret too powerful and too dangerous that it will frighten you. But if you ever reveal it to anyone, the ice king bent down and whispered such a potent words to the frog's ear that the poor creature started to tremble. What do you say? Now go on about your business, all of you. Try to forget what the big frog told you. For you are all living in the forest, and you have nowhere else to go. And this is how the big frog irritated the ice king, and how she was punished. The goblin saved the old beaver. Oh my god. Okay, there's so many more forest stories. Holy fuck. Once upon a time in a deep aged forest, winter gave way to spring, and in a sudden burst of warm air that melted in all the snow and all the ice, and all at once, the river swelled until it could no longer hold the water in it, and then it spilled out to create new rivers in places where no one was expect the expecting them. The whole of the forest went into a panic, looking for shelter from the rising waters. The very old beaver had been working on her dam when one of the new rivers had come rushing right at her. She screeched and squealed, but whatever direction she ran, more water approached. She was caught in the flooding and thought she had once been... And though she had once been an excellent swimmer, age had taken its toll, and though the raging water carried her off into the speed she couldn't control. Help, she called. The crafty goblins had been running back to their cave under the big wooden house when the, they heard the beaver's cries. We have to help the beaver, one goblin said. You go one way and I'll go the other. They ran, keeping touch with the gift of voice. Finally, one of the spotted her, twisting and tumbling into the river, but she was on the opposite side of the water, and the goblins could not reach her. Brother, the sister goblin called out through the gift of his voice. I see her, but I could I can't get her. Maybe you can? I'll try. The goblins tried to the goblin guided her brother so that he he would hit the river at just the right spot to reach the beaver. The plan worked and the soon the second goblin appeared just at the right spot. Beaver, he shouted, looking out holding out a branch. Grab hold of this, and the beaver grabbed it, but in her panic, she pulled the goblin in, too. No, cried his sister. She ran as hard as her legs could go, managing to outpace the river and to get ahead of the beaver and her brother. Searching for some means of getting them out, she spied a low-hanging branch. They'd sit by it quickly, but if they were fast enough... Brother, she cried out through their gift. You can... You're coming up on a hanging branch. You'll zip by it quick, but if you're fast enough... Got it, said her brother. And then he said to the beaver, Get ready to grab hold of a low-hanging branch. We're going to zip by it quickly, but if we're fast enough... Suddenly they were right in front of it and reached snagging hold. Through the water beat again, Though the water beat against them, trying to shake them loose, they pulled themselves along the branch, trying back to dry land. But when they, when they were all safe, the very old beaver thanked the goblins. But how, she asked, did you know just where to find me? And how did you know the branch was coming? The goblins shared a secret smile. Just lucky, I guess, they said. And this is how the goblins saved the very old beaver from the flooding river, and how she never knew how they did it. All right. The goblins invite, irritate the ice king. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient fo uh wood. The crafty goblins were getting into all kinds of trouble, and they had woken up a particularly mischievous mood that day. There was not a single denizen in the ancient forest that they did not manage to pull a prank on. They left a mud pie in the princess's kitchen so that when she dug in, she got a big mouthful of dirt, and they used paint to draw silly pictures all over the moose's antlers when he slept. They told the mangy muskrat that his coat had been returned to its former glory, which made him very sad when he rushed to the water's edge and found that he was, in fact, still mangy. They stole branches from the very old beaver's dam in order to have a sword fight, and they filled the old bear's den with burrs every time they ran away in fits of giggles, never stopping to consider whether their jokes had done any harm. They were on their way to fill the pious pelican's beak full of bubbles when they were 
hoisted into the air by their legs, though they thrashed and shouted, they found themselves stun staring into the face of the Ice King. All morning, he said, I have been hearing complaints about you two. They're just pranks, said the goblins. No one has really been hurt. Oh no, said the Ice King. He forced them to see how each of the victims of their pranks was doing. The princess had a stomach ache from swallowing the mud. The moose's antlers itched terribly where the paint had touched them. The muskrat was crying, sad about being reminded what his vanity had cost him. The very old beaver's den was flooded, and the old bear was trying to get burrs out of his fur, but finishing most of them... Hope, finding most of them hopelessly tangled. For your punishment, said the Ice King, you must, help each and ev you must help each of them undo the harm that you have caused. If you do a good enough job of this, there will be no more further punishment. If you do not, you will have to give me your noses so that you can no longer stick them into other people's business. Now the goblins liked their noses right where they were in the middle of their faces, so they had about... They, they set about making things right. They picked a real pie for the princess and brewed her a tea that would settle her stomach. They scrubbed the moose's antlers clean and covered them in soothing mud. They sat by the river with the muskrat, listening as he talked about the great detail of his old coat, and then they did their best to point all the things out that were still handsome about him, like his proud whiskers and sparkling eyes. They let the very old beaver rest while they prepared all the damage they had done to her den, and then finally they removed every burr from the old bear's fur, even ones that were hopelessly tangled. In the end, they came before the Ice King to see if they had done enough. The Ice King surveyed the forest and found that everyone seemed to be back to normal. What did you learn? asked the Ice King. That our pranks make people feel bad can make people feel bad, said the goblins. The Ice King smiled and nodded. Your actions have consequences, in case you forget, I'm going to leave you with a reminder. Whenever one of you prank when your pranks is going to hurt someone, you are going to feel a little pit in your stomach. So that will be your punishment and your warning. So every time after that goblin set out to do a prank that they would build that went a little too far, they felt a little pit in their stomach, and they were forced to consider if there was whether it was the right thing to do. And that is how the goblins irritated the Ice King, and how they were punished. <coughs> the pelican and forgives the goblins. Once upon a time in a deep ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave behind, below a deep, a big wooden house. Uh, they lived with a wise princess, who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. Is this uh, as this left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. One day, as they were f out foraging for food, the pious, pious pelican had landed on a rock and dumped a smorgasbord from her beak, which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. There was the king. There were king crabs in red, blue, gold, and scarlet, ve veiny blue shrimps, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming, and they watched as the pelican ate one clam that they, and they took a nap, and then took a nap. Do you think we should, she would mind if we took just a little? Asked one of the goblins to the other. Her beak never empties, so she wouldn't possibly, c you miss a couple of crabs, said the second, licking her lips. They were agreed, so they crept over and filled some crabs and ran. The goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. She would miss out on a handful of shrimp, said one of the goblins to the other. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed all the scallops, but when they were finished, they had found that they were still hungry. So they went back for clams, then sea urchins, and finally even a sea, the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? she asked, unable to lie about it. The goblins confessed their crime. The pelican was dismayed, but when she was chari but she was a charitable hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must in return follow my example and be as generous with others as I am with you. But to that take that to heart, and I will have considered your debts paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving hearts, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realized how much they had to give, and the, for the rest of the day they looked for ways to help other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose staggering with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, struggling with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, and so they climbed up and gave it a good scratching. Next they helped the old bear, who could not get honey out of the narrow beehive. They climbed up on the top of the tree with the hive, and they dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the, use, found the princess crying over the loss of what she could not speak about. So they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug and stayed with until she felt better. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good? 
being as generous as I am, said the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems that we can't solve on our own. But if everyone goes about with ger generosity in their hearts, there is always someone to ha on hand to help. But we all must commit to do so, or that may never, or there may not. There may be no one there to help you when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for her food and the lesson. Of course, by this time, they were hungry again, and that remained an ongoing problem until the day of the stalwart moose taught them to fish. But that is another story. And that is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. <coughs> oh, my God. So many stories. The goblins meet the, tr the ice troll. Once upon a time, in an ancient and deep forest, the crafty goblins were awake long after they should have been asleep. One goblin said to the other, Let's explore the forest. Now, the goblins were not in the habit of exploring the forest late at night, and they did not know what they would find. But this did not scare them off. They crept off into their out of their beds, bundled up, and went exploring. It was dark. The light of mo the moon was just enough to keep them from walking into trees, but they could not move the fifth more than they could not see more than fifteen feet in front of them. Every time a twig snapped or a branch rattled, they considered turning back, but they didn't, and so they had several ventured far beyond the house and into part of the forest that they were not familiar with. When they were realized that the snapping and twigs of branches and rattling of branch, the snapping of twigs and rattling of branches had become steadily something that following them, they turned to run, but. The hulking figure emerged from the darkness, sweeping them up with a giant hand and stuffing them into a bur burlap sack. <sighs> My goblins wriggled and cried out, but the sack remained shut as the captor stomped through the forest, singing, Widdle diddle dum, widdle diddle dee dee, in this bag is a meal for me. After a lot of thumping and thudding, the bag opened and the goblins were dumped into a giant iron pot full of warming, warming water. A huge troll stood overhead, grinning down at them through the bushy white eyebrows. I am the ice troll, and you are my dinner. You're ready to cook with go you ready to cook the goblin singing Whittle diddle dum whittle whittle diddle dum dum dee dee there's soon to be soup for me. Finishing his ditty, he went over to soak the fire beneath the pot and let out a long noise of pain, rubbing his spot on his back that always ached. The troll stood painfully and walked over to a stone shelf where he began to chop potatoes. One of the goblins had an idea. She whispered to her brother and follow my lead, and the goblin stretched out in the water, floating and letting out sighs of contentment. Ah, said one of the goblins, this is the most relaxed I've ever been. My body feels good. I think I could run a hundred miles without stopping, said the second. The troll peered, peered at them. They weren't supposed to be happy about being in a cook pot, but they certainly looked like they were. Troll, said the goblins, if your back is hurting, you should try sitting in the water just a little bit before it gets too hot. The troll stomped over, but if I take you out... Then you will escape, and there would be no soup for me. Put us back in the sack, suggested the goblins. Then we can't run away. This made sense to the troll, and the spot on his back that had always ached was still bothering him, so the goblins couldn't go anywhere if they were trapped. So he stuffed the goblins back into the sack and climbed into the soup pot. He stretched out and let out a sigh of contentment. Meanwhile, the goblins threw themselves around in the sack until it began to swing. The troll was so relaxed that he didn't even notice. The bag dropped onto the shelf where the troll had been chopping potatoes, and the goblins pushed up and against the edge of the troll's knife, saw, sawing, sawing a hole. Then they made a break for it. The troll finally noticed that they were doing and roared out in anger, but he was so relaxed that he had tried to chase them. When He was so relaxed that when he tried to chase them, he tumbled out of the cook pot and into the flames, catching on to his bushy eyebrows on fire. The goblins ran and ran and ran as fast as they could through the ancient deep forest until they were back in their cave, safe on their beds. They vowed to never venture into the ancient deep forest at night again, for they did not think that they'd get so lucky as to trick the ice troll twice. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins met the ice troll and why they never did it again. Alright, third last one. Alright. The trolls trick the... <coughs> Can you tell them getting sick of this? The goblins trick the muskrats. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient wood, there lived a muskrat. The muskrat was a lazy, cowardly creature who did not, who did little but lay around in the sun, cleaning this beautiful coat until it shone. One day, the muskrat found the crafty goblins playing, ki playing king of the mountain, king of the mountain, on his favorite rock. He was so cowardly to confront them direct. He was too cowardly to confront them directly, but he retreated to the safe distance and then pitched a stone right at the hor hornet's nest hanging overhead. One of the goblins saw him do it before. She could say anything. The hornets emerged, furious, and chased the goblins away, stinging them. With the rock empty, a muskrat claimed a spot. When the goblins returned, they asked the muskrat, Why did you do that? 
I don't know what you're talking about, he said, turning away to ignore them. The goblins knew that the Ruskrat cared for nothing but his coat, so they devised a plan to steal it in order to teach him a lesson. As the muskrat lay in the sun, he spied the goblins strutting by, their skin covered with flecks of gold. Goblins, called, called the Ruskrat. Ugh! What happened to make your skin shine that way? When we were attacked by the hornets, we ran and ran until we found a pool by the glacier. We dove in and then came out this way. Would you show me this pool? asked the muskrat. The crafty goblins led the muskrat to a pool. The muskrat looked at the pool skeptically. It looks like a pool, he said. The goblins chuckled and shrugged. You don't have to jump in if you don't want to, but do you, what do you lose if you try it? If it works, what do you... If it works, why, you'll be the most beautiful creature in the whole forest. With the visions of his splendid coat in mind, the muskrat jumped in. When he emerged, he was disappointed to find that nothing changed. Huh, said one of the goblins. Maybe you have to be stung by the hornets just like first, just like us. The muskrat hesitated because he, getting stung would be painful. Seeing his hesitation, the goblins added, If it works, you will be the most beautiful creature in the whole of the forest. The muskrat decided that it was worth it, and he returned to the hornet's nest and pinched pitch the stone right at it. The hornets emerged even more furious this time. They chased the muskrat, stinging him repeatedly until he jumped into the magic pool. The muskrat was disappointed to find that once again nothing had changed. I wonder if the magic only works for us, said one of the goblins. Would you like me to jump in the pool with your coat? Said the muskrat hesitated. If it works, you will be the most beautiful creature in the whole of the forest, with visions of a splendid coat in mind. The muskrat agreed. He slipped it off and handed it to the goblins. Without his coat, the muskrat was pale and covered with scabbing welts. Instead of jumping into the pool, one of the goblins ran away with the coat, laughing. The other pushed the muskrat into the frigid pool, and the water splashed the goblin. The gold flecks ran, revealing that they had only ever been painted on. The muskrat cried so pitifully and made a clamor that he woke the Ice King who came down to the forest to see what had happened. When the Ice King saw the muskrat, he laughed, only further infuriating the creature. Tell me what happened, said the Ice King. Both the muskrat and the goblins told their sides of the story, and the Ice King considered the case before him. It is true that the muskrat is vain, and he thinks of nothing but himself, concluded the Ice King, but he needs something to keep him warm in the winter and snow. So the Ice King was decided the muskrat will get his coat back, but it will be patchy and unkempt. After this day, he became known as the Mangy Ruskrat, and that is how the goblins tricked the muskrat into giving, his, giving up his coat and how he got his name. The moose teaches the goblins, second last one. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were hungry, and wasn't a, this wasn't unusual. The goblins were always hungry, but today they were particularly hungry. They opened the wise pelican's cupboards, or the wise princess's cupboards, and looked for a snack, but all she had was a small pile of nuts and berries, just in one strip of dried fish. The goblins grabbed it all and, the gobble, and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. They went out into the woods to look for more to eat. First, they dropped by the small pond. The big frog was asleep, and beside the pond was a pile of insects she had caught for, the, for eating after she woke up. The goblins crept up under the pile, careful not to wake the big frog, and they got close. She riveted loudly, and they froze. But the big frog kept sleeping, so they grabbed up the pile of insects and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. They kept back into the woods and found the stalwart moose. Watching them, did you steal the big frog's food? Watching them. The, the, the moose was watching them. The goblins tried not to look guilty, but failed. She said we could have them, they cried. Oh, really, said the moose. Let's ask her. So the moose woke up the big frog and asked, Did you say the goblins could have your food? The big frog looked like the goblins, looked at the goblins who, knew sh who she knew were always hungry and nodded. Yes, I did. Really, said the moose, surprised. Frog nodded and the moose sighed. All right, then, he said. Then he had to let the goblins go. Their next stop was the river. They watched as old bear swiped at a leaping salmon, catching it to deftly in his large paws. He let it upon the rock. He laid out upon the rock and left it to dry, lumbering into the woods to seek out some berries. The crafty goblins crept up to the rock, careful as carefully in case the old bear returned. They re reached the rocks, grabbed the salmon, and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. As they crept back to the woods, the stalwart moose was once again waiting for them. Are you going to tell me the old bear said you could have that? So, yes, yes, replied the goblins. Old bear amped up at the moment, and moose asked him, did you give the, leave the fish for the goblins? Old bear looked at the goblins, who he knew were always hungry, and nodded. I did, he said. Really, asked the moose. Really, said the old bear. After the moose left, the old bear said to the goblins, Be sure to tell the princess I was kind to you, and don't steal my fish again. The goblins, still hungry, went to look for the one more meal. As they crept up to the mangy muskrat's lodge and began to climb inside, they were dragged right back out. The stalwart moose dangled them 
by the seats of their pants and said, Now I know Major Muskrat, did, Major Muskrat didn't tell you that you could eat his food because he blames you for his coat being ruined. Besides, he barely has enough for himself and doesn't d share with anyone. The goblins began to protest, but he had shook his head. He set the goblins down and said, Come with me. The goblins followed the stalwart moose into a part of the river where it started. It ran slow enough for them to walk into the safety. He gave them each a fishing line and said, I'm going to teach you to fish so that when you are hungry, you do not need to steal from the animals of the forest, but it will be hard work, but it will be honest. The crafty goblins were not against working hard. They were just hungry, so they listened to the moose and soon pulled wiggling fish out of the rigor, river. They ate them up, and finally they were no longer hungry, and that is how the moose's name the moose came to teach the crafty goblins to fish. Last one. The mad hunter gets his hand back. Uh-oh. Once upon a time, in a deep and old lake near the ancient forest, there lived an old seal who, used, who was a powerful witch. After angering the Ice King, she had been bound to the lake, allowing only a venture out when the moon was full, and only looking like the hag that she truly was. For years, she dreamed of vengeance, all alone with the deep lake among the corpses of her many previous victims. One night, she awoke to see the black and hooded silhouette clawing to reach for a beautiful gown full of stone. The human heart, the human had delved far deeper into the lake than any had land dweller had, than any land dweller have been able to go. His tenacity and ferociousness impressed the moon hag, and she decided that she would, she would be, he would be wasted in her statued, statuary of corpses. She used her magic to expel him, allowing him to breathe underwater, but also having him service her also binding him to her service. You, she said, will be the instrument of my release and my revenge, for you and I together will kill the Ice King. The moon hag had never heard of the Mad Hatter, and she did not know how powerful he, the power he welded. She could only tell he was a hunter, and that he, his, her lust for revenge blinded her to the threat he posed. She gifted him a hand of ice, which was not as nimble as the hand of flesh, but, all, but allowed him to serve her better than no hand at all. The moon hag spent the years devising the perfect plan to kill the king, the ice king, and here is more moving all the pieces into place to execute it. In the meantime, the mad hunter served her, guarding her chest of treasures and plotting his own plots. Finally, everything was prepared, and the full moon rose, and the mad, the moon hag stopped on land, giddy at all the thoughts she would never have to leave again. What? Oh, if it did not please her, she brought the mad hunter to his post and jagged piece of ice and stone from which would be loose from the arrow that would slay the ice king believed she could go he put forward a proposal before she could go he put forward a proposal moon hag said the mad hunter if you grow back my missing hand i would be certain to hit the ice king with my arrow if you would have only one shot i would be i would hate to miss you are a powerful witch so you'll be able to craft ties to bind me to this place then i cannot break the moon hag considered it all right i will grant you I will grow back your hand and then bind you with the ties that will not and bind you here with ties that will not break. She cast a spell and the mad hunter's hand of ice was replaced with a hand of flesh. As the witch left to complete the next part of her plan, the mad hunter grinned wickedly into the night. After a short time, the moon hag ne returned, uh, luring the ice king into the mad hunter's lure of sight. Line of sight. What is this about, moon hag? asked the ice king. Many a long years have you bound me to the lake, said the moon hag. Many a long year have I been alone in the dark. That ends tonight. She cast a powerful spell that made the Ice King show, slow to react, and then gave the signal. Mad Hunter, she cried. Let your arrow fly. Nothing happened. She twitched nervously. Mad Hunter? She growled. Let your arrow fly. Still, nothing happened. The Ice King, meanwhile, was striding towards her, slow but furious. The moon hag fled, running fast first to the jagged peak of the ice and stone where her servant should be avoided, but the peak was empty. The ice, the ties had been broken, and the mad hunter was gone, for in the end he was the more powerful of the two, especially once he had two hands. When the ice king finally caught the hag, his furious voice caught could be heard throughout the forest. For your wickedness, you will be eternally bound to the lake. You will no longer be allowed to leave, and even under a full moon, the moon hag was imprisoned to the lake, which she never again tried to escape. And this is how the moon hunt mad hunter escaped the moon hag, and how he got his left hand back. Uh, oh my god, that was a it? lot. You looking for something in particular? Uh, my diary. You never told me about it. Yeah. With the way Marianne was, I tried extra hard to keep it a secret. Marianne. That was like an hour, man. Yeah, I am in pain. Day she found out about it. My neck hurts. Oh, okay. Let's remember. I'm sorry. That was just a lot. I'm a little like whiplashing now. Mom. Mom.
Mom, where is it? What did you do with it? What now? I can't find my diary. I know you stole it. Give it back. Sweetie, whatever I do, it's just for your benefit. You read it, didn't you? Oh. You had no right to do that. I have the right to do whatever I need to protect my little girl. Boy. I'm not your girl. I hate you. You will always be my little girl. That's not what he wants no to hear. No matter how hard you fight me, I'll fight twice as hard to keep you safe. You're not supposed to call him your little girl. That's wrong. <laughs> I didn't understand. My throat hurts from reading all that. I don't know how I that was like an hour. Coming. I cannot. She told me right to my face. She was willing to hurt me, to keep me from transitioning. That's not what she said, like at all. She said that no matter how much you fight her, you'd always be her kid. And yes, she said little girl, but maybe she just didn't no understand yet. There's no way you could have known she'd go that far. Yeah. Oh, right. I guess that's true. I keep forgetting that he had to kill her because she back. attacked him with a gun. Her room was the only place I didn't look. Okay, but do you need to get it, like, now? Yes. That diary was important to me, Allison. Hmm? Writing down my thoughts helped me realize who I am. Don't deny him this. Well, then let's go find it. Let's do it. Alright, nothing new you in here. You think her room is still locked? It always was. I'm not looking forward to going in there. I know, but we'll have to eventually, and I need it back. I don't think there's anything new. Yeah, the books. Okay. All right, let's go to her room then. Oh. Hello. Ice King finally caught the hag. His furious voice could be heard throughout the forest. For your wickedness, you will be eternally bound to the lake. What? No way. Quiet, let me finish. You will no longer be allowed to leave. Not even under a full moon. The moon hag was imprisoned in the lake, and she never again tried to escape. Hmm. And then the title. What do you think? Not bad, right? Uh, I guess that's okay. But I would have changed the end. What? With what? No way. How would you have changed it, Tyler? The Ice King. I totally forgot about him. I just read about him. That's because it was dangerous to mention his name. He was too powerful. Super powerful. So what, did they write the... How many stories did they write and how many stories would, did their mom write? Alright, mama's room. Marianne's Hold room. Hold up. What? Remember this? Uh, unfortunately. You must solve my riddle to earn the right to enter the princess's sanctum. Oh. Nothing a good hard shove won't take care of. Eh. I mean, yes, we could brute force it, but it might be kind of fun to finally solve it, right? Yeah. We have different definitions of the word fun. Okay. Closure. Well, if we break it, we're just going to have to fix it for the sale. So let's at least try not to. You have the Book of Goblins? Yep. Oh, no. Hand it over. Oh. What are you looking for? The image on the door. It's making me think of a story from the book. One that Marianne wrote. You have a way better memory than me. <gasps> I just read that. Well, the Book of Goblins was my creation. What? And you'll never let anyone forget it. It was? I'm so confused. Here it is. The one about the princess's party. Oh. That's why it didn't tell me who gave what? Give it a read. I think the symbols may represent something in the story. Okay, well, I already read this, so... First ghost memories, now storybook puzzles. What a weird day. It's the weirdest day. What a weird childhood. Touche. I, I, I would have loved to have a childhood this friggin' imaginative. This is so cool. Your mom's room is literally a puzzle. Okay, so... Let's see. There we go. Okay. The party. 
Okay. So the first one is the torch, which I'm assuming is okay, so. Um Okay. So Okay, but what about the gifts? Um... Right from wrong, I'm thinking might be the moose. And then... The magic sword might be the bear. Maybe the money is the pelican. So just try moose, bear, pelican. I did it! So the moose wants to make sure she knows right from wrong. The bear wants to make sure she's protected. And the pelican wants, pelican wants to make sure that she's always fed and happy. And she always has what she needs. And boom, oh, pretty. we're in. I love it. It's kind of creepy, but like in a like mystical type of way, less of a horror type of way. Have you ever been in this room? Ever? So many years, I expected this to feel more, you know, like a win. Uh. Speak for yourself. I'm the one who solved the riddle. <laughs> Why do I feel like you're not going to let me forget that? Oh, well, power went out. I'm surprised that was on in the first place, actually. Where do you think we should start looking? Everywhere. I don't know. Where in this mess would she stash someone else's personal thoughts? Whatever's going on won't let me in. Ugh. They used to tell me everything, but they shut me out, Tessa. They've shut me out. I've had so much on my plate lately, and... And... They're convinced I'm the enemy, and I don't know why! I need them. I need my goblins. Oh. I remember now. We heard her crying. We listened through the door. Seeing her like this. As if she's still here. Creepy. Yes. It really sucks. She yeah. was really coming apart those last few months, wasn't she? What's this? It's another collectible. No. Yes. The wise princess. Oh, I like the design. Hello? I don't know why... The wise princess has run away from a far-off land. She won't tell anyone what she's running from because she's just thinking about it makes her cry. She's friends with all of the animals in the forest and has great has a kind and generous soul. All right, I don't know why there wasn't a voiceover for that one. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. What's this? Uh, sewing lessons were the absolute worst. She made all our clothes. I'm sure she needed the help. And I, for one, am happy I can fix a torn seam. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. I tried to seat. read this one. I can never figure out the order of the chapters, though. Didn't the author go insane mm. or something? No wonder Miriam liked it. Straight in the trash? No. I bet we could sell it on the internet. It's adorable. True. Maybe we could sell it to the guy who collects John Wayne Gacy's clown paintings. <laughs> Is 
she and mm-hmm. Tessa were best friends. Until suddenly they weren't. Um, Wonder what happened. Either Tessa got sick of Marianne's moods, or Marianne got sick of Tessa's judgment. Fair. What's this? Let me... Let... Do you mind? I'm looking. Aww. Guys she are adorable. always had to have a picture of us close by. Why this picture, though? I mean, do you see the expression on our faces? What about him? Oh. This explains a lot. They're mostly full. She was too stubborn to take medication. Doesn't say what type it is. Nothing else around here to look at. A uh, shelf. Is a diary in a shelf? You. Yeah. It's here. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Do you think she read it? Of course. She was nosy as hell. He doesn't want to be touched right now, honey. Raising a transgender child. Oh, Virtue Seekers Youth Camp. Presented by the Alliances for Traditional Families. Wait. What? Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. The whole reason he killed her is because she attacked what? him when he cut his hair, right? Look. But if she's got a book like that, then she wasn't, like, insane about it. What? Where did you find that? It was on her desk with her papers. Hmm. Seriously? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, we gotta be not. really careful not to overthink this. But it doesn't make any sense. She, she was mad, right? She was mad. I, I cut my hair. She attacked me because I cut my hair. Yeah. She was mad and she attacked you. We both saw it. Then what is this shit? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Tyler, come here. What's going on? She can't do this to me. Not now. When I've finally made sense of a few things. Well, that was your first mistake. Thinking the world made any kind of sense. Oh, she's a good sister. <laughs> Ten years in the grave, and she's still finding new ways to piss us off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I need some air. Okay, honey. gonna be okay, Tyler. I'm gonna figure this out. Are you really, really sure? I am. Do it. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> oh, see what it looked like at the beginning. You do not do a very good job. Well, it's not really the point of how good it looks now, is it? It's just the fact that your mom wouldn't do it. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Is it all gone? It's awful. Yeah. You need, like, to get that. It, oh. it looks amazing. Oh, okay. It doesn't <laughs> really? look as bad now. Yeah. <laughs> it looked all I over can't the wait to show mom. She's been so sad lately. Oh. More than sad. She's been scary. Yeah, but not tonight, though. It was almost like a party. <gasps> Thank you, Allison. You don't have to thank me. You're my sister. 
Brother. I feel more like, like your brother. Brother, sister, we look out for each other. But I'm pretty sure I just gave you a really bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Mom? Mom? Oh. oh, honey. She's in the shed. the gun down for a second? <sighs> Mom? <gasps> It's not about your hair, honey. Oh my god. <laughs> 